rode on an elevator with Obama in Atlanta earlier this month and took pictures and video of the president from his phone. While all presidents have faced death threats, Obama is believed to have received more than any of his predecessors. In response to calls from lawmakers for an independent probe into the September 19th fence jumping incident, the Homeland Security Department will establish a panel of independent experts to investigate what happened and report back by December 15th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. We've made significant progress wiring the nation's schools for the Internet, but we have to do more. Every child in America should have an Internet-capable computer in their bedroom at home, preferably with a high-resolution webcam. I have been to children's chat rooms and have been shocked and disappointed to find they are frequently empty. Even when these youngsters do manage to find their way online, they lack the skills to do something as simple as pinpoint their location on Google Maps. I long for the day when someone can log onto the Nickelodeon under 13 chat room and type, hey, any kids in here like to play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? I have a Nintendo at my house. And be overwhelmed with instant messages. Then I'll know we're doing our job supporting technology in this country. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of these airwaves right here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 as we are gearing up, packing up, uh, getting the remote studio ready to roll out to Orlando, Florida. Uh, We're going to be going, Mark, you and I, and uh, some other folks will be going to Coins in the Kingdom. I'm very excited about that. We'll tell you more about it coming up here in a little bit. But that doesn't mean the live show stop. Uh, Daryl and Ellen will be here live tomorrow night, and then we will pick things up from uh, Saturday night and Sunday night from live from Orlando. So uh, Free Talk Live continues to be live every single night. And you can continue to call in and bring up whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-453. Coming up, it's happened. Magnets have been banned in the United States. Magnets. This is not a joke. Magnets have been banned. A certain type of magnets, uh, the kind that you play with, the fun magnet. Kind. Rare earth metal magnet magnetic spheres. Yeah, we'll tell you more about it here. It's pretty ridiculous. And then also, Mark, you'll be sharing with us another outrageous story uh, out of California, where apparently uh, there will now be a gun restraining order that one can seek to place on someone that they're scared of. And so some shocking stuff coming up here on Free Talk Live. But first, to your calls and thoughts, Adam Kokesh calling in, speaking from California. Are you in L.A. tonight, Adam? Yes, I am, Ian. Thanks so much for having me on today. Yeah, well, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Of course, longtime listeners uh, know that we have you on every now and then to kind of update. Uh, update. To see what a new crazy thing you're doing. <laughs> Folks on what you're up to <laughs> these days. You are fresh out of uh, jail as of last year. You haven't. Uh, thankfully, you don't have to go back there anytime soon at all. Hopefully, you're on yeah. probation. But the probation isn't locking you down to one place because a lot of times probation will do that where you can't leave the state in which you have the probation, you're actually getting ready to go on a tour. Yeah, I'm allowed to travel uh, as, a, as long as it's for work. And I love what I do, and none of it's work, but certainly legally it all qualifies because uh, while I was in jail, I started writing the book Freedom that, uh, that you all know about, I'm very excited about, as the ultimate way to get someone to consider the message to grow the movement And I'm not so much fresh out of jail, uh, almost a year out now, but fresh out of court after the final entanglements have been cleared and all that's left is probation. So I will be uh, checking in here in California as my home base. So we are going to be living out of a trailer for the next year, an RV trailer, in order to travel the country and get the message out there as much as possible. I think this is a really important new, uh, I shouldn't say new, but at least a new emphasis for me, for my activism of, you know, not trying to build an audience, not trying to get in the news and make headlines, not trying to, you know, do something flashy and get people's attention, but to see what actually
actually work to get out and grow the movement and change the way people fundamentally think and look them in the eye and hand them a book or a sticker or something and, can, you know, and, and talk to them and listen to them and ask them to consider what freedom means to them and to really consider embracing it as uh, so many of us have as a moral code, if you will. Now, there have been other uh, tours in the past. Uh, Pete and Adamo from copblock.org have gone on what was called the Liberty On Tour. Which Liberty they, On Tour, yeah, uh, the, the they, big bus, man. It was beautiful. Yeah, they did that a couple of times where they went on from you know place to place. And you know, they engaged in some activism, but the primary thrust of that was to kind of connect people within the Liberty Movement with one another in different cities. You're going to be doing outreach to anybody, right? I mean, what do you, what do you have planned? What, what are some of the stops? I know you mentioned Sturgis to me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited about that. But we've got uh, events planned where we are going to be bringing people together as well, and I think it's important to be kind of doing events. Uh-oh. Sounds like he might be on the road already. Uh, you're, you're, we're kind of losing your cell phone signal. Or I'm presuming you're on a cell phone, Adam. I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, we were kind of losing your cell phone. or I'm presuming you're on a cell phone signal. It was cutting out there as you had just sort of begun oh, to describe it. No, no, I, I apologize. Yes. So there's always opportunities to bring people together, and we tend to do that uh, a lot when we have events. But more importantly, it really is about expanding the movement, growing out into other target audiences, and you know, finding events like Bitcoin events, like where you're going to be in Florida, mm -hmm. or like Sturgis at a bike rally, you know, or uh, you know, um, extreme sports events, things like that, where you know there's already a, a very strong ethos of freedom. But, you know, there, there is not a whole lot of, uh, you know, broader consideration of what it really means. And right now, we're, we're, I mean, we're way behind as a movement. You know, how many people really, uh, you know, really understand what freedom means the way that, that, that you and I would describe it? It's a very small part of the population mm -hmm. that even cares enough to think about it in those terms. And we have to ask people to think. We have to get out and do that. And so we're going to be doing campfire events, the American Campfire Freedom Tour, we're going to be doing uh, tabling at a lot of other events. We're going to be doing uh, retail outreach where we're going to be putting uh, copies of the book into stores for free where people can go get them. We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff like that where we're not just uh, bringing people together as we normally would on a tour like this, but we're asking people to join us in doing outreach. And right now we're raising money on Indiegogo to fund this, and it's the American Campfire Freedom Tour there. And the idea is to have as many books as possible that we can give to other people to hand out with us and go out and walk around and talk to people and show us around town. And a lot of people are asking, how can we guarantee that our city is going to be on tour? And it's, uh, there's a couple ways right now through the Indiegogo campaign. For, uh, you, can, you can arrange for me to come and do an event, or for $100, I will come and personally deliver uh, a signed copy of the book and a T-shirt to your door. That's pretty awesome. And we want, to, yeah, we want to do as many of those as possible. So if anybody wants to meet me, say hi, get a picture, can't come out to events, anything like that, or you're in a remote area, we want to come to you. That's how much I care about getting people to read this book and get enthusiastic about it. Is that I'm willing to go out and if, if you know if, if we sell a thousand of these, that, that this is what I'll be doing for most of the next year. But I'll go out and personally deliver as many copies of the book as it takes it's incredible. to make this I have to say, I mean, the, the level of dedication there is, uh, is pretty impressive, Adam. So when is this kicking off? When is the first, you know, you're, when are you he heading out from L.A. for the whatever the first stop is? Well, right now I'm moving into the trailer. It's a very exciting process, getting it outfitted properly with the studio and everything like that. And then we are doing a, a little warm-up leg where we're doing uh, Phoenix, and then Austin, and then Milwaukee and back, a big triangle. Uh, and it's, it's partly to, to test out all the logistics. And, and during that time, we'll still be running the crowdfunder. It goes through the end of the month. So for people to jump on there on Indiegogo.com, the American Campfire Freedom Store, I really appreciate that. And then in November, we'll be planning it, November, December, and then we'll officially kick off in January. Okay. Now, so American Campfire Freedom Tour, what's the easiest way to get there? Can they go through your website, thefreedomline.com? The easiest way is yeah, we have a banner on uh, on, on our website at thefreedomline.com. That's the best way to get there. Very cool. I, I'm excited about it, Adam. I think you know you're a great activist. You put your money where your mouth is, and a hundred bucks to have Adam Kokesh show up with a T-shirt and a book uh, at your you know wherever location you want him to show up seems like a really <laughs> it seems like a really good deal. Seems like you're gonna be losing money on that. A year on the road is well, dedication they're, they're, too. 
There are a couple. There are a couple small caveats to this. One is it has to be lower 48. I can't drive to Hawaii. Okay, fair enough. And uh, I can't. I can't drive to Alaska because I am not allowed to leave the country right. as part of my probation. And I'm not allowed in D.C. So anywhere in the lower 48, <laughs> yes. And you know what? We've got a really modest goal for this because we're going to be able to keep raising money throughout the tour. But just to kick it off and make sure that you know we have enough to make it through the year. We're, we're trying to raise thirty thousand dollars. We just started, and I'm I'm floored that without any outreach really so far, we hit three thousand dollars right away. Very modest goal, uh, but all the money right now is going into you know printing books and being able to to have this to spread the message, having the tools. And I I just so three hundred deliveries. If I can get three hundred people to sign up for a hundred bucks, we are set. And uh, we we calculated I could do up to a thousand of those if we had to, but. We've, uh, we've got a lot of room to go, and, and we really appreciate the help. And if anybody wants to pitch in, Indiegogo.com, American Campfire Freedom Tour. And I, I really appreciate the endorsement from you guys, or for, from you, as, as you said, Ian. You know, well, hoping to I see you swing up through uh, New England at some point during the tour, and maybe we'll get to see you in real life again. Thanks, Adam, for calling Absolutely. in tonight. Appreciate it. Thefreedomline.com, that's his website, and uh, you said there's a banner there. Oh, there it is. Yep, help us take the message on the road right there, the Indiegogo. Thanks, Adam. Good luck, and uh, keep in touch. We're coming up here in moments. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. I love doers, and he's definitely one of them. It's Free Talk Live. You take control. Are you living with pain? I was, after a nasty fall. I got relief with one-hour pain relief. I'm Barry Yarconi, president, and here's Lisa, a Marine who was injured in Iraq. After surviving an explosion, I was on horrible painkillers for lingering head, shoulder, back, and knee pain. But I hated the dangers and side effects. My friend told me about one-hour pain relief, and now I'm off the drugs. One-hour pain relief is the result of 15 years of research on an amazing extract from hops, the plant used to flavor beer. Whether your pain is from an injury or just aging, you get safe, all-day relief in less than one hour. Get a free one-week trial for just the small shipping charge. Call 800-900-1221 right now or visit onehourpainrelief.com. There's no gimmicks, no obligation, no automatic shipments. Stop living with pain. Call 800-900-1221 or visit onehourpainrelief.com. That's 800-900-1221 or onehourpainrelief.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, get a free pound to try out the subscription, cancel anytime, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You dial toll free. Bring up anything you want. 855 450 free. That's. 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. And Lauren, Objectivist Girl. And Mark. And you can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and do get interactive there. You can create the content right there on the front page of the website. Just submit whatever you'd like. And then uh, other listeners can vote it up or vote it down if they like or dislike. Something else you can do on our website or through our website, coffee.freetalklive.com, is get yourself a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. It is shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. Now, BuzzBox does something that's pretty special with Free Talk Live in partnership with us. That is, not only do they provide great coffee to you delivered to your door... Uh, you can order however much you want, deliver it as often as you please. That's pretty cool. But also, for every 10 people that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com, we can fund a micro loan through Kiva, which uh, can help people in tough parts of the world to live in to make a better life for themselves, you know, improve their business, upgrade something that they need to. We've helped do lots of people up to this point. And we'd like yeah. to help more. That's yes. awesome. So every 10 listeners that goes to coffee.freetalklive.com funds a new micro loan. And every time that uh, micro loan gets paid off, we'll refund another one or we'll fund out, I guess, another one to, uh, to somebody else. So you can help people around the world and you get great coffee delivered directly to you. You get a free pound by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. You just pay the shipping cost and you can cancel your subscription at any time. Again, that's coffee.freetalklive.com. Magnets are now illegal. The press release coming from our friend Shihan Q over at Zen Magnets. Uh, we had Shihan on the program in the past. We were at one of the Bitcoin conferences and that's where we met him. He was actually walking around with a sign on his back inviting people to pay Bitcoin and purchase magnet sets. You may have seen these little magnetic spheres. They're very, very small, you know, much smaller than even your pinky nail. Very small, like maybe a, a quarter or size. Like a BB. Yeah, like just about the size of a BB. But, just about the size. But very magnetic. And uh, they are fun. You can you know, put them together and make sculptures. And it's a great little kind of a desk toy. Not for kids, uh, but it's a desk toy. And the reason why they're not for kids it's like an adult kind of toy. Uh, they're not for kids because if a small child swallows two of these magnets, yeah. one and then a little bit later swallows another, there's a chance they might pinch their intestines together. Ugh. So, you know, you want to make sure a baby doesn't get their hands on this. And uh, Zen Magnets had... Now, a lot more people die every year. A lot more children die every year from balloons. It's true. And no one has proposed to ban balloons. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I mean, can't they just put a little warning label on They've it? They got it. And, they put a know? big warning label on it. Yeah, I mean, and, on every and, side of the package, I think, and then there's even a warning, you know, <laughs> inside the package I mean, as well. I mean, I'm not I'm not a fan of warning labels. I think things like coffee like contents of this container are hot, like duh, you just got coffee mm -hmm. or like you know, people that wear this suit cannot fly on those Superman costumes. I mean, they're I mean, obviously like you'd you know, think Captain Obvious, but, but apparently like, some people don't, don't know. Ban things like <laughs> that's just well. Ultimately, rude what, to the rest of us, what's happening here is the federal government has decided that warnings aren't enough. That people are too <sighs> ignorant. 
uh, too stupid to be able to figure out warning labels uh, on magnets and that they just need to be prohibited in the first place. And this in the supposed land of the free. Here's the press release from Zen Magnets uh, via press wires. The CPSC commissioners voted about a week ago to approve the final rule on the safety standard for magnet sets, which bans small, high-powered magnets like Buckyballs and Zen Magnets. The meeting was broadcast live from CPSC headquarters in Bethesda at 10 a.m. Four of the commissioners voted to approve it. One commissioner declined to vote, noting it was inappropriate to proceed with rulemaking prior to hearing the active recall litigation against Zen Magnets. The CPSC's concern is that magnets are an ingestion hazard towards children and may stick in the intestines if multiple magnets are swallowed, requiring surgery to remove. Zen Magnets, the last remaining U.S. commercial magnet sphere company, the reason why they're the last remaining is because there were several of these companies and they all basically called it quits over the years as the CPSC started to put the pressure down on these folks. Zen Magnets is the only company that bothered to continue to fight on to keep their business. And they are vowing to appeal the rule. The criticisms cited are insufficient consideration of public comments, inaccurate cost-benefit analysis, and disingenuous injury analysis. Along with a direct apology to the owner of Zen Magnets, Commissioner K read from the letter that he received, quote, It was in a moment of awe and lucidity that I decided to start Zen Magnets. These magnet spheres are a window to a universe of curiosity and inspiration, utterly unlike any other product before it. To me, an adventure in, into geometry photography, physical forces, and most importantly, my own mind. As an adult, they still bring me the childhood wonder that I once had for much of the world around me. These magnets function exactly like they should. That they require more care and use than many other products doesn't mean magnets should be feared, but that they should be respected. Wow. I, yeah, you really feel bad for this guy. I mean, like, he's this obviously... Is rude. He's decimated. He's been yeah, decimated he's by this. He's obviously a really good guy that really wanted to create a product to make people happy. And, uh, you know, welcome to the new world order. I mean, <laughs> they're just banning things. Uh, whatever happened to parents being responsible for their kids? I don't know. It whatever must have gone away that? a long time ago because you have to wonder, what's is this the tip of the iceberg? What sort of product that every, all of us could use safely and know not to put in our mouth? Mouths, etc. Et the uh, children, of course, they're yeah. going to put everything in their mouths. Why are you giving them things that they could put in their mouths and choke on? Yeah, but this is this is this is conservatism. It's not worrying about children because the fact is, if you're worried about children, you'd ban balloons and a variety of other things that harm children. Everything, sure. right? So what this is is this is we can't have new things. That people may harm themselves with. Let's ban swimming pools while we're at it, too. Yeah. A lot of I children mean, die. Swimming pools, hot Bath dogs, tubs. hot tubs. But these uh, are old. those are old pencils. things, right? <laughs> Bends. These, this is a new thing. We can't have new things. Innovations that, that may cause harm are bad. The CPSC has argued, says a press release, that no warnings could be devised that would be appropriate since, like balloons, the magnets are too small for individual warnings. Approximately 88% of consumers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. the government agency that's in charge of putting warnings on products says it is this product is simply too dangerous for warnings. That's right. That's what they're saying. This is complete hogwash. No, it makes no sense. You know what they're really saying? You're too stupid to use this product yourself. They certainly are saying Th that. That's what they're saying. They're calling you stupid. Are you going to stand here and put up with it? Because I'm not. I'm not going to put up with it. 88% of U.S. consumers believe it's appropriate, or excuse me, it's inappropriate to ban magnet spheres to all ages. According to public policy polling and Google consumer surveys, the rule will become active in 180 days. Zen Magnets is required to appeal within the next 60 days in a district court and has stated its intention to do so in a spontaneous blog post. Until then, it continues to sell high-powered magnets at zenmagnets.com and neoballs.com. And in fact, in his longer uh, missive, uh, Shahan, the founder of Zen Magnets, points out that they're not really going to be able to completely stop magnet balls because you can order them from Chinese companies and just have them shipped into the United States and it's very unlikely that Customs is going to be able to stop all of them from coming in. Uh, it's not exactly They're probably not. yeah, it's probably not going to be a priority to go after magnet balls coming into the United States. <laughs> but it's easy for the CPSC to crack down on local retailers and, and stores and office supplies, you know, wherever, wherever you would buy these things. So that's what they're doing. More coming up. You share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. 
Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp freetalklive.com Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's antiwar.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves. You can bring up anything that you want. Your thoughts on the banning of magnet spheres. You can no longer sell magnet spheres in the United States, according to the CPSC, the supposed Consumer Product Safety Committee. They don't believe that there's any warning that could keep people safe enough from these dastardly spheres. 
toll free number 855 450 free. Also, Skype in at username lrn.fm. Just send a contact request in first, and then uh, we'll approve that, and you'll be easy to get in touch with us via Skype and share your thoughts about anything. Now, ExpressCoin is the way to go to get cryptocurrencies Bitcoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, and Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business, so they've got their T's crossed and their I's dotted. Uh, it's safe to do business with ExpressCoin. I've done it. Mark's done it. You can do it, too. Go to ExpressCoin.com, and you can actually even make a deposit at a local credit union with cash. You can send a money order check, wire transfer. It's very easy. By the way, that local credit union does have to have shared banking. And uh, very simple. You can just go and get started with your account over at ExpressCoin.com. The setup's easy, and you can do it from the United States or Canada, plus even your smartphone. Get their app over at ExpressCoin.com. So you've been thinking about getting Bitcoin. Uh, this is the option for you. Now, Mark, is the discount code still active with ExpressCoin? Yes, use coupon code FTL. Ah, uh, yes, that's what I would recommend you do, because if you use coupon code FTL, you'll get up to $40 worth of Bitcoin for no transfer fee. You know, normally when you buy, you know, when you tra exchange one currency for another, there's a fee involved in that. But ExpressCoin's going to waive that fee if you use code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. So go and get it done. Toll-free number tonight, 855-453. We go to Dave. He's in Vegas on the amp lines. Hello, Dave. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey. Um, since you're, you know, talking about banning things to protect the kids, um, there was an article, I believe, yesterday the day before that Eric Holder, the attorney general, who's actually on his way out, spoke at some global uh, conference against uh, child sex abuse or something. And the, the technology that I guess Apple and a few other companies are coming out with that would, I don't know that it would actually stop the police from getting your data. That's what they're saying. But he had come out and said, well, you know, the police need to get this data because if not, uh, people are going to be able to exploit your kids. And, you know, um, that law enforcement, you know, needs huh? this to protect the children. How exactly is it that police being able to access people's cell phone information is going to stop child exploitation? I don't understand that. I mean, I, well, don't, I don't know if you know the answer. I don't, I'm not expecting yeah, you well, to know. It, it, <laughs> sort of asking the universe. It's not. It's yeah. It's a, to me, obviously, it's just, you know, where they come out and they'll talk about terrorists or uh, drug dealers they need to catch. And it's just another thing that they're using to scare people saying, oh, you know, if you don't give us access to mm. everything and, and give up your privacy, you know, all these child molesters will be walking around. And it, it, I think it has to do with uh, what he tried to say is, you know, the images that people share of underage kids or something, they won't be able to access those. And uh, it's just, I mean, the whole the whole thing is just ridiculous. I mean, obviously, again, it, it's, you know, propaganda to try to scare people. You know, while we're banning things that are not child-friendly, why don't we get rid of porn, strip clubs, tobacco, oh, there's people alcohol, who agree with you. driving, everything else? Because, <laughs> you know, it's just not child-friendly. So well, right, child, none of us can do it. Child exploitation is a, a great excuse. I mean, you got to hand it to Eric Holder in this case because that's the best excuse. It's, yeah, it's the one them. that you can really trot out there. You can't have any privacy online because if any privacy is allowed online, the child pornographers will use it to purvey child pornography. So we must be able to see into everything you do. That's what the that's what the argument is, and it's strong, right? Like you, nobody wants to see children, uh, you know, victims of of you know this kind of abuse. Nobody wants to see that, right? Nobody wants to take the side of the child abusers in, in the United States. However, the uh, evidence is the NSA is, has nothing to do with catching child abusers. Well, and also look, the fact is privacy is important, and if you let the camel's nose under the tent then you are done at that point if there's no pri you know if there is no privacy then that's a terrible destruction of our freedoms and to allow the government to have full access to everything that you do online is a bad idea now you may be saying to yourself well oh well i have nothing to hide so who cares what would you say to that um i would say that you still have a right to your privacy and you should want it because well, what if, I mean, it's not about having something to hide. It's about the fact that it's your business. It's like, it's like if your mother comes in and reads your journal, even if there's nothing incriminating in there, it's still like, don't, wouldn't you feel just completely 
like you can't trust that woman anymore. Also, I think that people do have things to hide. So many things are criminalized in this country. You never know what it is. That's just uh, it. You may not realize what you have to hide. With the government right? deciding who gets health care and who doesn't and how that uh, is distributed and that sort of thing, you're not going to necessarily want all your health information up on the Internet or whatever. I mean, there's just a whole variety of reasons why you would want some privacy in your life. And I was actually t- talking to... Uh, uh, a friend of mine's uh, daughters, and they were in high school. And, you know, I asked them that. And, of course, they say the same thing. Well, we have nothing to hide anyway. So I said, well, give me your phone and let me look through your text. Uh, I was like, oh, no, we yeah. can't do that. I'm like, well, what's the difference? You know, yeah. and then it's like, oh, well, we can't do anything about it anyway. But j- just real quick, here's a quote from uh, James Comey, the director of the FBI, that's really disturbing. Um, he says, I'm a huge believer in the rule of law, but I also believe that no one in the country is beyond the law. What concerns me about this is companies marketing something expressly to allow people to place themselves beyond the law. You know, <laughs> saying that it's it's just the whole concept is is ridiculous. You know, because you want privacy, you know, you're actually developing something for people to break the law. Thanks for your call tonight, Dave. I appreciate hearing Thanks, from you. Guys. I appreciate you bringing that to the forefront. Privacy is the enemy of the state. I mean, it's just it's the enemy of the state. Yeah, they'll do anything to get rid of our privacy. Well, look at the uh, the protests, for instance, in Hong Kong or the uh, you know the ones in Egypt in the past. Whatever protests we're talking about, these movements to kind of unseat political people in power. The police really want to know where those protesters are. They really want to know what they're up to. They want to know how they're organizing. They want access to all their private information. And there are different methods of encrypting your texts, for instance. I'd be interested in in finding out how many protests have ever gone on without helicopters flying over them. Well, I, I imagine the ones that happened before helicopters existed. Well, yeah, I mean, other than that, though. But, um, I mean, it's a great way to get an aerial view of where everybody is. I mean, do you do? You Still, really there's think- limited information that you can gain from a helicopter. If you can mm. have access to all of those protesters' text information then that That's could be true. a game changer. That right? would be definitely a game changer. And we've also seen that the government has moved towards being able to uh, try to shut down cell phone networks to try to prevent people from doing any sort of texting with one another. So they're very interested in <sighs> getting in the way of these movements that are pushing for change. You know, whatever their movement is, in, in Hong Kong, for instance, it's, you know, we want democracy, we want this uh, this this elected person to be gone, etc., things like that. Whether or not we agree with the movement and what they're doing, they should be able to get out there and communicate with one another and not have some government goon squad monitoring their every single word. And that's valuable to have privacy in those circumstances. The government guys have privacy. You better believe they're using, uh, you know, military-grade encryption when they're talking with one another. How come we shouldn't be able to do the same thing? Right. Well, I mean, if you don't have the ability to, like, the government loves to go after protesters. They're going to paint them as terrorists every single time when they when they get effective. And if you don't have the ability to protest, you don't have the ability to change your government in any way, shape, or form. This country and many of them are founded on the idea that there's, a, you know, participatory democracy or whatever the idea is. Not that I'm for it or anything like that. I'm just saying that it undermines the very foundation of the philosophy of this country. Yeah, and I mean, our country was founded by what would be perceived as domestic terrorists. Yep, I they, mean, mm-hmm. so, you know, get on board with uh, the rest of us, right? So how do you <laughs> feel about the idea of having no privacy? Because child molesters, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. When Karl Marx failed because the workers of the world did not unite, that was the end of communism? Not a chance. It went underground and attacked the culture, movies, the school system, the family unit, and Christian values. Cultural Marxism, featuring Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, G. Edward Griffin, and Ted Bear, explains what happened. Get the DVD at moviepubs.net, worldnetdaily.com, or newswithviews.com. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. 
Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Have you heard? Proactive Plus is faster and better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway and you'll also receive free shipping. Do you have troubled skin? Acne? Well, we have great news. With Proactive Plus, your acne can heal and you can help prevent new breakouts from happening. Don't miss this limited time offer. Give us a call at 800-538-5252 because we're going to let a million people try Proactive Plus risk-free and get two free gifts and also receive free shipping when you call right now. You heard it. This offer won't last long. So call Proactive Plus now and you'll receive a 60-day risk-free trial of Proactive Plus, two free extras, and free shipping. Call 800-538-5252. This is our exclusive radio offer, never on TV. Get your risk-free 60-day trial of Proactive Plus with free shipping. That's right, free shipping. Don't wait. Call 800-538-5252. That's 800-538-5252. Andrew Michael Jones is a liberty-loving activist and participant in the Free State Project. He's also been accused of being one of the administrators of the infamous Silk Road anonymous black marketplace. Andrew is facing a federal trial for multiple crimes with no victim. Whether or not he's the Silk Road administrator named Inigo, he has not been accused of harming anyone. In fact, the Silk Road is actually an amazing advancement that has reduced the overall harm of the black market to both customers and drug sellers. Whether or not he did it, Andrew, like alleged Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht, deserves the support of people who love liberty. Visit DrewsDefense.org to learn more and contribute to his defense. You can donate via PayPal or in Bitcoin, as I did. That's DrewsDefense.org. Drew's family does not have much, and his parents have put up their home and both retirement incomes to secure a $1 million bond on Andrew. He's currently on 24-7 house arrest and is prohibited from touching any device that could connect to the Internet. Please contribute to his defense fund via DrewsDefense.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 you can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you there. We've got all kinds of stuff on our website. You can enjoy it at freetalklive.com. Well, there's other talk show hosts who want to charge you uh, for accessing their sites. Ours is free. So, again, that's freetalklive.com. And we've got Skype. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. So we were talking about the ban on magnets. You can comment on that. Also, the reason to invade your privacy, according to former Attorney General Eric Holder, is that, well, there's child molesters and abusers out there, and, well, the government's got to be able to get into your phone just to make sure that you're not one of them. And that's why they need to have total access, backdoor access to all folks' cell phones. And I say, you know what? No excuse is appropriate to crack into your privacy. You should have privacy. Now, the fact is you've got to take steps to have privacy. And that's where ProXPN comes in handy. That's one of many things that you should implement to increase your privacy because you just can't count on Google and Apple. I understand that they're saying they're implementing this great security measure of encryption, but 
I don't really trust those folks. You can go to ProXPN.com and download the app for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices, as well as Linux. Now, uh, well, Linux is a little bit of a different setup, but it's actually pretty easy to get that working with ProXPN. You get that st uh, started, you get it installed and connected, and you'll be encrypted, which means your internet service provider will not be able to spy on you. They won't be able to collect information about the websites that you visit or the search terms that you enter, which they're probably doing right now. In fact, they may be keeping that information that they're collecting up to five years. And, of course, if the government wants to access that information, most of the ISPs will just happily turn it over. Uh, so you can stop that from happening by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use our promo codes to get some sweet discounts on privacy that's priceless. The promo codes are FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and the number 50. That'll save you 50% off of the annual account. And that that is good for the lifetime of your account, by the way. There's also FTL BTC, which allows you to pay with Bitcoin, and you'll save 62% off the price of the annual account if you pay with Bitcoin at proxpn.com slash FTL. Now, when you upgrade to the premium account, you get some bonuses like unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. So those codes are FTL50 and FTLBTC at ProXPN.com slash FTL. They mentioned torrents in there. Yeah. Millions of people engage in what's called file sharing. Now, torrenting is generally considered you know, file sharing. It's one of many different types of file sharing. Um, but to be able to privately torrent is a good thing because it essentially obscures your IP address from everybody else that's receiving the torrent, which will hopefully stop you uh, from being targeted by people that want to prevent you from doing torrenting. Now, a lot of people... Or put you in a cage. It doesn't happen very often that people go to a cage for torrenting, but there have been some there court cases... There have been instances. Yeah, there have been some court cases where at the very least people have been fined thousands of dollars yes. uh, for torrenting. And in some cases, some people have been fined thousands of dollars who never actually did it. Like, I think there was a case of like a grandmother who was sharing some her grandson was sharing some music files through his grandmother's internet connection and because grandma's name is on the internet connection she's the one who's legally liable for it so again having some privacy protections can stop that sort of thing from happening but these government guys are demanding to have full access to all of your information. Many people are sharing files on the internet without really even realizing that there is risk involved in that. I mean, it doesn't seem like a big deal to go and download some album from a band or uh, the latest movie or whatever that has come out via the torrents, but that's technically, you know, a copyright violation. Yeah, I mean, and I, w I will do whatever it takes to try and keep the gangs from showing up at my door, you know? Share your thoughts with us here uh, toll-free tonight at 855-450-FREE. So my point being that you may not realize that what you're doing is something you could get in trouble for. Hap I, you know, it happens. Yeah, and, It really and does. Sharing files is so ubiquitous online that I don't think many people think about it. Yeah, sure, you put in a DVD and you'll get that message. Sometimes you rent a movie and it's like, piracy is illegal, and they're trying to remind you of this, but most people don't really care about that. No. Also, Until the courts come in with, you know, an indictment. We've read a few stories about uh, parents getting in trouble for taking kids of uh, t taking pictures of kids in like the bathtub and that sort of thing. Oh yeah, and uh, it, you know, this used to happen back when people would bring film to get developed, yep, and, and these the stories developers have, would snitch on them. Yeah, and these these stories have pretty much gone away with developing film. Uh, you know, in the last five years or so, this isn't done nearly as often, and. Now it makes me wonder, you know, what what happens to you? And when a, the government goes, you know, the overzealous zealous government worker decides to go through all your stuff and find some pictures of your kid in the bathtub. Wait a minute. I didn't know about this. So Absolutely. they get parents in trouble for taking kids pictures of their kids in the bathtub. Oh my god, do you know how many pictures my parents have of either me in Don't a bathtub tell anyone. or in <laughs> the, like cops, a, the cops may be going after your parents now. The, the thing uh, is, is that every that home in America has them. <laughs> we're not that tight. <laughs> but seriously, like that's so silly. Like these are memories that parents are trying to like store. There was another one where uh you know, they took the, there were some photographs of a child breastfeeding. Mm. And uh oh. You know, now Facebook uh -oh. is letting that happen. That's pornography. Uh, uh, actually, did you know public Facebook? Public exposure. Did you know Facebook just took off its ban on uh, breastfeeding? 
I didn't know that. No. Yeah, so you can put breastfeeding pictures up. Well, uh, finally, I bet you can't put Chase a picture. Christopher Chase Rachel's is uh, and and his wife are like big advocates for getting rid of this being seen as pornography. Well, that's nice to know, but I imagine Facebook will still ban you if you put a picture of just breasts on Facebook. Yes. Well, that would actually just happen. Because um, it's your body, but we have to protect it for you. This uh, <laughs> this guy that runs this uh, natural parenting thing, Justin Everett Stout, we've talked about him mm-hmm. on the show before, he uh, got banned for 30 days for, for his site having something that somebody decided was pornographic on it. Mm. Rather, I mean, this is a site about natural motherhood. Um, so It is. Yeah. I, I mean, Christopher Chase Rachels, who uh, does the Blue Ridge Liberty Project, has been working on this for years, him and his wife. And um, it's just disturbing how much the government... I mean, the fact that they're finding your pictures and, like, that's that's creepy in the first place. And well, then, somebody reports them. It's not... Facebook doesn't go around looking usually for naked pictures or topless pictures, but there's usually some prude who will click the report button. Yeah, and sometimes, but, you know, every once in a while. Um, so the, the point is, is that this is completely natural. This is, I mean, something that's beautiful. Uh, life is beautiful, and, and this is... This is... Uh, part of life it's a shame that more people don't have your perspective lauren because uh you know whether it's breastfeeding or just being topless there's a huge uh disconnect between men can be topless that's not a problem but women yeah. oh there now that's some so for some reason that's pornographic it's so uh, silly. what's the difference exactly actually there's a great graphic somewhere online i should look for it and you can put it up on the site that shows like the similarities between uh, the male chest and the female chest. And it, it's like, what's the, there's this little bit of difference, and suddenly it's a huge deal. Um, and, it's and all societal. That's all it's, it is. It's very upsetting. I see even my generation headed in a direction where they don't, you know, uh, appreciate the beauty that is life and the body and all of these other things. You and think I think so. Even your generation? Yeah, even my generation. You know, they, I mean, I find... I would think that younger people would be more open to the idea getting, of topless equality. They're getting better because a lot of them are lean... Uh, my generation seems to be leaning against religion, which is good. But, like, ultimately, yeah, I mean, I meet a lot of prudish people in my generation. Wow, it's very that. weird. I have, to, I have to agree. To some extent, there was some outreach that we were doing at the local college during uh, a local campaign here. And, and James Cleveland, who was doing the campaigning, he was the candidate was sort of marketing himself as like the party candidate, like legalize pot, legalize underage, you know, alcohol possession, or lower the drinking age, that kind of thing. And I was actually shocked at how many people were turning up their nose. How many people at, of your age in their yeah. early 20s, late teens were turning up their nose? It wasn't the majority, but it was a, a fair amount of people who seemed like straight edge and kind of stuck up uh, about these sorts it's of things. It's funny because I don't think I've ever met anybody that wasn't drinking before they were 21. Yeah. And we turn 21 and then we forget about all we forget about that feeling that we felt and that logic we came to about uh, you know I can serve in the military but I can't have a beer and we forget, How do you about, forget about that I don't understand because that. now you can do it so now it's not a problem it's it's like it's yeah. like that argument about socialism first they come for you know the the homosexuals then they come oh, no, for you're the right. Jews you're right then, but some you know, of the responses I got from people when I was talking about oh well he supports lowering the drinking age some of the responses were whoa well I'm 21 so I don't care yeah, yeah. yeah exactly that's what I'm saying there's more coming up here at 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 you take control of the airwaves. Secession and a false Ebola scare. It's all on the way. Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, get a free pound to try out the subscription, 
Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, October 1st, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,208, silver opened to $17.28, and Bitcoin is trading around $381.59. Today's Bitcoin price is brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news today, the first case of Ebola diagnosed in the United States was confirmed yesterday in a patient who recently traveled from Liberia to Dallas, a sign of the far-reaching impact of the out-of-control epidemic in West Africa. The unidentified man was critically ill and has been in isolation at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas, Texas since Sunday. That word from federal health officials, they would not reveal his nationality or age. On Tuesday, California Governor Jerry Brown signed into law a bill that would allow the temporary seizure of guns from individuals who the courts deemed to be a threat to themselves or others. Under the new law, law enforcement officers can ask courts for restraining orders, which would bar the individual from possessing a firearm for 21 days. The measure was supported by Democrats and anti-gun groups and opposed by the NRA and gun owners of California. Charles H. Cunningham, a director with the NRA's Institute for Legislative Action, called the law one of the most egregious violations of civil liberties ever introduced in the California legislature. China's government has cut off news about Hong Kong's pro-democracy protests to the rest of the country, a clampdown so thorough that no image of the rallies has appeared in state-controlled media, and at least one man has been detained for reposting accounts of the events. By contrast, media in semi-autonomous Hong Kong have been broadcasting non-stop about the crowds, showing unarmed students fending off tear gas and pepper spray with umbrellas, as they call for more representative democracy in the former British colony. Support for the Liberty Bee comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries. Homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated. Helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is The Liberty Beat for Wednesday, October 1st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook, facebook facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. The Federal Communications Commission chairman will consider a petition that asks the agency to consider finding broadcasters with the National Football League who continue to use the Redskins name when referring to the Washington football team. Activist John Banzoff III has registered a petition with the FCC asking the regulatory agency to strip Washington radio station WWXXFM of its broadcasting license for using what he says is a racist and hateful word. If the FCC agrees with the petition, broadcasters would be punished for using the football team name. The Washington Redskins is also currently battling the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office after they canceled the team's trademark registration based on alleged racism. 
A new study published in the journal JAMA Pediatrics indicates that frequent prescribing of broad-spectrum antibiotics increases the risk of obesity in children. The study found that babies who were given broad-spectrum antibiotics in the first two years of life were more likely to be obese between their second and fifth birthdays than those children who had taken no antibiotics or narrow-spectrum antibiotics. While broad-spectrum antibiotics are found to be highly effective, they can also kill off beneficial bacteria the body needs. The study examined medical records of nearly 65,000 babies and children from the Philadelphia area. The increased risk of obesity was about 11% higher for children who had taken antibiotics versus those who did not. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat. For Wednesday, October 1st, 2014, I'm Brian Hagen reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. In what medical authorities are calling one of the worst ointment complications in White Plains Hospital's history, area girlfriend Caroline Nagler was rushed to the ER this week after suffering an extreme overdose of scented lotion. With a blood lotion level of 0.45, hospital sources confirmed that Nagler had rubbed onto her body four times the lethal limit of shea butter, green tea cleanses, and naturally soothing mineral therapies. Even putting aside the sheer level of lotion Ms. Nagler had on her person when she arrived at the ER, this was an especially lethal combination she was using. She was mixing scented moisturizers, age-defying serums, and even some harder stuff like jojoba and essential fruit extracts. Frankly, she's lucky to be alive. In other news, Beijing's air solidifies. A Delta Airlines counteragent assures a man he will never see his family again. And a mannequin must think he's some pretty hot They say if you love something, let it go. But how could we possibly leave you behind after being blessed with a relationship as unique and complex as this one? For more, keep checking TheOnion.com. This is The Onion News Network. Talk Live. Take control toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, Mark has a story out of California where there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Uh, Things are getting a little bit more insane with uh, apparently a law that will be going into effect at some point that will actually make it so you can get a restraining order on someone with a firearm to prevent them from having said firearm. You get a restraining order on their right to carry a firearm, Mark essentially. Mark will give us more on that. Also, uh, Lauren Objectivist Girl is with us in the studio here tonight. Hi! Our toll-free number is 855-453, and you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Mark, let's jump into it, shall we? Sure, no problem. Um, so this is a recently passed law. There's some very happy people that they got this uh, passed right here. There's a picture of them. This is from yesterday from theguardian.com. California law will allow families to seek temporary gun restraining orders. California will become the first state that lets family ask a judge to remove firearms from a relative who appears to pose a threat. California's Hmm. first-in-the-nation gun restraining order legislation was born out of a college town rampage that left six people dead at the hands of a killer whose family felt helpless to stop him. Remember, is that the Santa Barbara thing? It didn't. It's not specific here. Yeah, advocates say that its greatest use actually might come not in preventing headline-grabbing murderous sprees, but in helping family deal with families deal with loved ones who are in danger of taking their own lives, or who might be so angry or distraught that they turn a gun on family members. Victims of domestic violence in California already can file for restraining orders that can include the removal of firearms. So I didn't know that either. So apparently, if somebody accuses you of something now, you can have uh, y- your right to, to, to bear arms right. taken from you. And what does it cost to try to get it back? I mean, once you uh, embroiled in court Yeah, because you know there's money. It's always about money. I'm and sure the attorneys are you very You can buy happy. it back. Sure, just hire an attorney for $10,000 or whatever. Everybody can afford that, right? <laughs> And you know the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Oh, you and your con- you and your bill of rights. 
It's so cute. It really is, Mark. Well, I'm just saying, that's what they wrote down. Minarchy for the win. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, is if you're going to operate a, a government, you should operate it by the rules. The rules state I in the Bill of Rights. Not. What's that? He is a dreamer. I, yeah. That's it's, what I'm saying. so cute. But he's not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Governor Jerry Brown on Tuesday signed a law that will make California mm. the first state that lets family members ask a judge to temporarily remove firearms from a relative. It's well, okay. It's only temporary, Mark. It's not like it's a permanent abrogation of your rights. <laughs> of course. No. I mean, as long as you have money, you can buy your way out of it. It's no big deal. I mean, just act like any, uh, you know, monopoly corporation that has their hands in the, in the uh, congressional system through their lobbyists. I mean. Well, that's what the government is. It is a monopoly and it is a corporation. Yeah. You can buy anything from the, from the government. It'll also let law enforcement authorities go directly to a judge to seize guns from people they deem to be a danger, as they uh, oh, already wow. can okay. in Connecticut, mm. Indiana, and Texas. Texas. That's a shocker. Well, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's not getting used that often. Mm -hmm. The problem is once they have these things on the book and then they decide to use them, then you're really in trouble. I think it's important before I move on to explain to people why it is that we don't like the Constitution. What do you mean, we? I'm sorry. Um, I and maybe Ian. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it. I no. used to be. I used to be uh, like a constitutional guy, but then Me I, too. I I like what uh, Lysander Spooner had to say about it. Are you familiar with that? Uh, no, you should tell me. He wrote in No Treason, I believe it was, in the late 1800s, and I'm paraphrasing, that the Constitution has either been powerless to prevent the tyranny that we have today, or it's authorized it, one or the other. Yeah, I People just, will say that exist. we've failed the Constitution. I really just don't like the philosophy behind it. I mean, I'm a philosophy person, so that's mean? the angle that I'm going at. So philosophically, I mean, you have natural rights. And the fact that this little piece of paper needs to promise you those rights, I... I mean, I'm not, I'm not up for it. Like, I just don't think that it's philosophically sound to say these are the rights that you have. Like, we're, you're lucky enough that we're giving you these things. And we might take them away from you. And the fact that they're legislated and not just seen as obvious and natural is the reason that we're losing rights is because they can legislate it away. Well, to be fair to the Constitution uh, and at least the uh, intentions behind it, it was only supposed to outline the rights that were supposed to be respected by the government. Obviously, it didn't work, but it, it wasn't to suggest that the Constitution gives people rights. It's a common misconception about the Constitution. No, I'm not saying rights. it didn't, but yeah. that's just it, is that it leaves it open to misinterpretation. And that's oh, yeah. what I'm saying. That's the problem with the philosophy behind it, is that people interpret it as we're given rights by the government. Well, I mean... Yes, people do interpret it that way, but a lot of them. But a lot, most, a lot of people don't know what it says at all. Like they have no clue. <laughs> That's sure. true, um, including the police. A lot of the part that actually knows what it says thinks that government's giving us. Uh, there was some poll I read at some point or another. It's like one third of the U.S. population believes the Constitution protects your right to own a pet. I mean, you know, <laughs> it, it just goes to you know, <laughs> this oh, no. document isn't protecting anything because people don't read it. No, oh, not no. even the people who've sworn an oath to it have read it or. Or any comprehension of it. In many t in many cases, you'll ask police officers on the stand, um, "Have you sworn an oath to the Constitution?" Well, you know, have you read it? And they'll be like, "Blah blah 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 blah." No, <laughs> you know, because they haven't. <laughs> they haven't thought about that at all. Amendment nine does say the enumeration <laughs> in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage. Others, meaning rights, retained by the people. So the idea is, is that this doesn't enumerate every right, just the ones they felt like writing down. So back to the story here, the proposal being that, and this is a law, and I mean, it has been signed into law, and I, I imagine will take effect probably at the end of the year. I'm just guessing that it was just recently signed in California by the governor. The just One of the disturbing parts of this is that essentially family members are the ones who can file this against other family members. And, Lauren, you were saying during one of the, the breaks of the show that you're not really a fan of some of the people in your family. Um, you're not going to go out and try to do anything to those folks, but they might do yeah. something like that to you. Uh, there's all kinds of strife within families where people just don't get along, right? Families are just, sorry, they're just strangers you're born into. Sometimes some family members are cool, others not so much. Some of them are, you know, dangerous to your freedoms. And in a place like California... 
uh, there's a real anti-freedom mindset amongst many of the people who live there. So it's probably not an uncommon situation to have a family, let's just say, you know, five to ten people. I don't know how direct the family members have to be to qualify for this. Can a grandmother file against her grandson? Or does it have to be like a direct mom and dad versus their son or son versus the mom and dad? I don't know what the you know restrictions are. Can a first cousin file against a second cousin? I mean, that kind of stuff. But let's just presume you've got a, it's just a direct family with a, a couple of parents and two or three kids. And one of the, the children in that family, he's 21 years old. He wants to go out and get his own gun. But mom, dad, and the other people in the family are anti-gun they do not believe in the right to bear arms and they even though their son it hasn't you know explicitly threatened anyone they just are so against the idea of bearing arms that they'll just pull one of these restraining orders just to put a stop to it and say whatever they want to say yeah well, clearly anybody who wants a gun is crazy right so that in and of itself is 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 enough to just and it could just simply be that you know they they care about their son right it's just that their viewpoint is that he shouldn't have no one should have firearms so therefore they need to stop their son from having a firearm he might shoot himself you know my family and I aren't aren't really that close but I'll tell you what um I will give you thank you Ian Go ahead. um I will give you that I never had to worry about even if this had existed when I was a kid, this would have never been a problem. My dad, when I was 17, took me to go hunting. And he said, Lauren, you need to know how to use a gun because you need to be able to protect yourself. And I want to know that wherever you move, when you move away from this family, you are able to protect yourself. And I encourage you to be armed because... Well, he said because you're a girl. <laughs> but, you know, well, it's an equalizer. It's girls, certainly girls true. have disadvantages. It's true. My dad was, you know, it, that sounds a little feminist, but I wouldn't pin God my dad for God made man, a Sam Colt made him equal. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, the fact is that a gun can really level the playing field in a situation where one person wants to be violent towards another. And All it's right. not just women. We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts. 855-450 free. This seems like another good reason to leave California if you love freedom. It's free Get talk out. Lot. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Hey guys, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to check out FanDuel.com. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. You only play when you want, and you can change your team any week. FanDuel is paying out over $10 million every week this season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right. For every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. Just go to FanDuel.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code FOOTBALL70. F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALL70. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, October 1st, 2014, gold opened at 1216.90. A one-ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1261.65, 630.82 for a half ounce, or 315.41 for a quarter ounce. That's 1261.65, 630.82, and 315.41. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237.
It's the Onion Radio News. Teen sex is linked to alcohol and drugs by the Center for Figuring Out Really Obvious Things. This is Doyle Redland reporting. An exhaustive four-year, $23 million study of substance abuse and sexual habits of more than 2,500 American teens has confirmed that young people between the ages of 13 and 18 who drink and or use drugs are more likely to be sexually active. Dr. Gerald Eckersley is director of the Boston-based organization. We found that this phenomenon also occurs among adults as well as every population everywhere in the world that has ever existed since the dawn of time. The center has sent a teleprompter to ready press release of its findings to more than 400 local TV news affiliates across the U.S., along with stock video footage of beer displays and teens smoking and drinking at parties. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free and bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we will share with you. California is now going to be allowing families to get gun restraining orders on family members that they're concerned about. I've got I've got concerns about my son. I think he might hurt someone. Because these are special strangers in your life. Well, yeah, as I was pointing out before, uh, family is just strangers you're born into. It's weird. And if you, and it's not uncommon for people who love the ideas of freedom to feel like they're the only person in their family who agrees. And they may very well be. And then to have the ability, because your family doesn't like your political viewpoint, to come down and abrogate your rights is a pretty scary idea. Well, you know, it's it's more than that. My dad is, for all intents and purposes, an objectivist as well. I mean, he liked Atlas Shrugged. He thought it was a little, you know, long, unnecessarily long. But um, he liked it. And, um, I mean, he's pretty much an objectivist, for all intents and purposes. I grew up... Um, Republican. So, and my mom pretty much talks about the Republicans the way she talks about the Democrats. So, I mean, they're, I mean, they're pretty much libertarians and just call themselves Republicans. But Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, that's not my gripe. I mean, I I just, it's weird. It's like, you know, and especially since I moved away, I go home and it's like, you know, these people, I, I don't really know these people that well. Hmm. I mean, I know I grew up with them, but like I went to great pangs throughout my my uh, high school years avoiding to avoid them, t- talking to them because I'm a teenager and I don't sure. want to talk to them. And then well, when I got to college, I moved away, you know, yeah, I Those think there's, the, that's the result of government school. It's weird. <laughs> that's true. I think there's something to what you're saying, though, that, you know, when you're growing up with these parents, even though you've been with them 24 hours a day or, you know, 16 hours a day or whatever, uh, that ultimately your relationship between you and them as a child versus as a teenager versus as an adult, it changes. And I haven't gotten to know them as an adult to adults because my mom treated me like a child for so long. And so, you know, now that I'm, she's treating me more maturely, I wouldn't say maturely, but more maturely, (laughs) 
um, it's weird. Well, there and, is that problem that some parents have, right, where they don't want to see you as an adult, right? To, yeah. to some parents, you're always their child, and they'll continue to treat you in that way as though they're above you because they're older or whatever. That's not a problem I have with my parents, but what I, I do, a problem I do have with at least my mother is that I don't want to really— uh, you know, tell, share my life with her because she doesn't have respect in a lot of ways for some of the, the things that I believe, and she's not really interested in hearing what's going on in my life. It's okay for us to talk about her and, you know, her work, you know, whatever she's doing at work and with her church or whatever, you know, but as soon as we stray into the area of what I'm up to, then it becomes something that could be a conversation that might be dangerous, right? Because she could get upset. She doesn't like it when I talk about the uh, the freedom ideas because she's a Republican. She doesn't believe in freedom uh, in, you know, from her perspective. Uh, she believes Just in economic. control. She believes in, I wouldn't even give her that. No. Uh, she, she believes in controlling others because she believes in the war on drugs and that you'd have to have, ec- if you want economic freedom, you, you can't have a war on drugs because no. you should if it's economic freedom that you want you should allow other people All to businesses. sell and buy whatever yeah. it is they want to do um and so you know i get into those conversations and she gets upset so we don't really have a relationship in that way and that's that's unfortunate yeah i mean when you moved here see for eight months my mom kept asking when i was going to move home and it's really really funny mm-hmm. because you'd think after like three months she would have gotten it but like eight months into yeah, wasn't it, she I've got, bugging you, I've like got a last, job. W- w- last time we were with you two weeks ago, she was sending you text messages. She was. I mean, bugging she, you about that. She texts me 24-7. And that's why I say more maturely, but not, you know, I, I, if I tell her I'm going out, she'll be like, hey, text me when you get home so that I know you got home <laughs> safe. And I'm like. I'm yeah, like, she's totally treating you like you're still a child. Midway, midway yeah. through the evening, I'm just like, I'm home. Do you think a lot of people in the? Do you think a lot of people in this movement, and specifically when I say this movement, I mean the people that have moved to New Hampshire for the Free State Project, have bad relationships with their parents? I wonder what the breakdown is. It's common. It's very common. And also, the other trend that I've noticed is that a lot of people in the libertarian movement have like lost a lot of weight. There's like a whole like huge group too. That's true. Yeah, that's completely unrelated. But now, Mark, uh, unrelated, actually lives, but it's Mark, two things I've noticed. You actually moved your mother into your property, so you've got a good relationship with mom. Yeah, she lives up here half the year. Yeah, so that's great. She moved for the Free State Project. Did she really? She yeah, joined up? I got her signed up. That's great news. So that's you can awesome. Do, you can do the same thing. Whether or not you've got a bad relationship with your parents, if you care about freedom, uh, you should move up here to New Hampshire because the Free State Project is a great idea. The idea is to bring people together who actually love liberty and concentrate them in one place. And I think that at least at this stage of the game, we still have the what are, are called early movers moving. So all three of us are early oh, movers. Yeah. Uh, the Free State Project goal is to reach 20,000 signers, people who've pledged to move to New Hampshire. We've got over 16,000 right now, so we're over yeah. 80% of the way there. But uh, until we reach that 20,000 mark, everybody who moves or, you know, at, uh, up until that point is an early mover. And I, I would just think that it's easier for somebody who feels more disconnected from their family to pick up and move their life. What are the two numbers? I know that there are two numbers that were given when we move here. And one of mine is under 1,000. And I'm trying to remember our... And the mover number? Yeah, there's a mover number, and then there's another number. In-state number. In-state number? There's yeah, there's the... Yeah, because there's, there's the number that has uh, the, the amount of people that were already here, sort of, uh, you know, what had happened. And then there's a signer number, and then there's an in-state, uh, in-state so, mover and signer so number. So to better explain that, uh, when, you, uh, when, when, pe- when the first vote, when the vote happened for the Free State Project, because there were 10 different states that were candidate states, and the first 5,000 signers of the Free State Project voted on which state the destination should be. Mm-hmm. Well, of those 5,000 people, some of them were already living in New Hampshire. So there was like 250 or so that mm-hmm. were already, maybe 275, that were already living in New Hampshire. So those people were already in state. So therefore, they can't be counted as movers because they didn't have to move here. Okay. So that's the difference between Yeah. Numbers. So my number is like 997. And I'm, I, cool. I love it, like being in the first thousand. And my other number is is... Obviously larger than a thousand, but come on up, join the yeah. fun at freestateproject.org. Oh Get gosh. the hell out of places join like California. Us. California. I mean, why if you care about freedom, California is one of the worst places Ew. to be and it's not getting any better. There's no good news on the horizon for liberty in uh, in California. I mean, okay, yeah, they've got pot. 
whoopie doo there's pot in new hampshire too it's still illegal but hopefully we're going to be changing that new hampshire does have a medical cannabis program now and that's kind of getting moving forward it's been uh, through the house several times it just can't pass the senate medical but cannabis has th- passed but a uh, lot but you of mean de- you, you mean decriminalization yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Or so it's gone through the house several times it hasn't gone through the senate but i think a lot of our candidates i think decrim did get through the senate and it got shot down by the governor this year I think that's really? what happened. Yeah. Legalization oh. didn't go through the Senate, but decrim did. Now, decriminalization, of course, means removing criminal penalties or lessening criminal penalties for cannabis. And I think that we'll we'll hopefully see that happen sometime within the next few years. You know, it's really, really, really scary when you have a Democratic governor and they still are like anti pot. They're like yeah, it's still crazy. Well, Democrats and Republicans in New Hampshire aren't the same as what they are in other places. That's true. So, like, Republicans will vote for gay marriage, a lot of them, in New Hampshire. Yeah, they're more like libertarians. While in many ways, well, not all of them, but uh, (laughs) while in many ways, the Democrats uh, will support gun rights in New Hampshire. So they're like libertarians in that way, too. So (laughs) you, you really can't come to New Hampshire with any preconceived notions about that. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though, it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated. So send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213 213- Four nine three zero three zero eight. It's a long distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213 493 0308. That's 213 493 0308. Hey guys, Mark Clare here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the morning roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the morning roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. 
We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com, advancing the ideas of liberty daily. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything and dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Hey, it's not too late to join us in Orlando. Mark, you and I, we're hitting the uh, the airport tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll make it through the TSA and get down. I'm really just worried about you. To Orlando. <laughs> uh, it's, where, like, it's not like you can go through a TSA line without messing them with them in some way. We're at the, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? I'm actually, you know, I'm fairly docile when I go through the TSA line. You're always trying to figure out something. Oh, should I carry my uh, metal bill of rights through this time? Or I haven't done that in a long yeah, time. Yeah, what am I going to say yeah. to the uh, the chatty TSA agent? I could... always opt out. That's all I do. Really, that's that all too. I ever do is opt out. I guess if you think that's a big deal, I don't think it is. Actually, I prefer to opt out because I don't. I don't know. I don't mind getting the extra special attention. It doesn't bother me. A little free government groping. Little, yeah, a little bit of a massage. There you go. All right. Yeah, so. gotta love that. <laughs> hey, we're going to Orlando for Coins in the Kingdom. It is going to be a Bitcoin party at the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando. And if you are in the, anywhere in the southeast, this is going to be worth coming to, from what I uh, can tell. Tickets are just 60 bucks, which is an amazing price for basically a full weekend of fun. And uh, speakers, all kinds of different Bitcoin-related speakers will be there. You can go to coinsinthekingdom.com to get the full list. We will be broadcasting live both Friday, or excuse me, not Friday, uh, Daryl will be here in the studio uh, with Ellen on Friday. Friday night, and then we'll broadcast live Saturday and Sunday from the event. And you can be there. Bring your kids, because kids under 12 are free. I hear there's going to be a scavenger hunt. Is that right, Mark? Some sort of a hunt yeah. for uh, fun stuff for the kids. So there's like a whole, uh, there's going to be, you know, plenty of things for adults as far as speakers and stuff like that. Um, but then there's also a you know, a whole kids track, as I understand it. It is at Walt Disney World. Right, which I think is very interesting because we've been to these Bitcoin conferences before, and I've never seen anybody under the age of 18 at uh, at a Bitcoin conference. I am so jealous. I wanted to go to this so badly. Fun is going to be mandatory, however, so come on out and join us. For coins in the kingdom, go and celebrate magic internet money at the Magic Kingdom. Again, tickets are sixty bucks. Hotel rooms ninety nine bucks a night, and kids under twelve are free. Coinsinthekingdom.com. It's this weekend. Do you remember this debate where I was Which like, debate? I was like, fun is mandatory. Well, so much for anarchists. But there, <laughs> but you know, the argument was made that it is technically their event. It's a private so contract. Can, yeah, right? it's private. If you so. want to come to Coins in the Kingdom, and you don't get to have not, you don't get to not have fun. That's yeah. the idea. Okay. Right? That's All right. the idea. That's why it's I'm their not, party. That's why I'm not going. It's their party. <laughs> they can do it however they want to do it. I don't know how to have fun. Yeah. So, well, coinsinthekingdom.com, I'm looking forward to it. And so there you go. Toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. Do, is, was there anything more to say about this crazy California law that's just uh, been passed where family members can get a restraining order against your right to bear arms, which, of course, has been constantly infringed upon in california so it's not like anybody should really be too surprised that this is what's happening now i you know i mean i'm i'm disturbed how this is going to be used could it potentially be used well yeah i mean there's certainly people out there that i i'm disturbed that they might be armed um but so arm your damn self in that, response that's the yes. other way to look at it right like you know what you mean, can't do in california don't- don't take Not away easy. people's rights to be armed. Just be armed yourself. I mean, unfortunately, in California, I don't believe that it's. I don't know how possible it is to arm yourself when you're walking out and about. I know a friend of mine lived out there, and he explained that he was legal to have guns in his home, but he could not take them outside his home. So I don't know what you have to do. What sort of crazy hoops you have to jump through to get concealed in California? I imagine many. Yeah. I just want to point out that people's fear is not a justification for taking away other people's rights. Well, apparently it Certainly is in not. California. Yeah, but um, philosophically, no. Right. So get yourself, if you care about freedom, to places like New Hampshire 
where gun rights are actually respected to some extent. Now, New Hampshire isn't perfect. Uh, in New Hampshire, you still have to get this shall issue permit in order to concealed carry. But you can walk around open carrying in New Hampshire and in other states as well with no permit whatsoever. But and you can't do that in California. That yeah. geeks me out that you have to get a permit to do something that's already constitutionally legal. Well, those Not that it things... needs to be constitutionally legal for you to do it, but I just it geeks me out that those that's are necessary. Some of the things that, that need to be changed over time. Here. Was that was that put in the Constitution? Uh, somewhere in the right to bear arms, I do not see anything about needing nope. a permit to no, do it. No, because if you get a permit, then you <laughs> you don't have a right anymore. Well, there are twenty thousand gun laws in this country, and uh, you know some, you know, some more and less restrictive. That's federal, Fe- twenty thousand federal. Is right? that federal ones? Okay. I could be wrong about that, but I, as I recall, that's... Wow, yeah, that is just federal. really sick. All right, so toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Here's a little bit of good news for you. Ron Paul, he has uh, he's continuing to make headlines, and I think it's great news because he's actually doing stuff for freedom, unlike his son. Uh, <laughs> NationalJournal.com is he the take site a jab, whatever you can get it. <laughs> where this is uh, being reported on by Rebecca Nelson. Secessionists across the world were inspired by Scotland's energetic attempt at independence from the United Kingdom earlier this month. And Ron Paul, as it turns out, joined them. In an essay on his eponymous institution's website Sunday, the former U.S. congressman from Texas wrote that any supporters of freedom should cheer secessionism because it allows for a smaller government. A constant mantra for the libertarian and perennial presidential candidate who didn't previously realize there were more than a handful of secessionist groups in the United States. He says, I was real pleased with that and a bit surprised, Paul told National Journal. But then on second thought, you think, why not? Why not more? That is as in, why not more secessionist groups? Fringe groups, says the article, calling for states and regions to secede from the U.S., such as the Second Vermont Republic and the Alaskan Independence Party, gain more publicity in the weeks leading up to the Scottish referendum. As the outsized federal government continues to encroach on individual rights, said Paul, he thinks there will be a groundswell of these movements. He said, quote, it's something that I think is going to grow because the failure of the federal government is going to get much worse. Now, that is not a, a tough prediction to make, right? Like, it's <laughs> it's pretty obvious that the federal government's not going to turn around. They're not going to get smaller. Even if Rand Paul gets elected, the government's not going to get smaller. They're going to keep getting bigger and more intrusive and more oppressive. It's not a it's a safe bet to say that the government's going to keep getting you know, seems got, like a safe bet. I got to tell you, Ron Paul is like. The coolest guy, isn't he? He really really is. He's so cool. I remember. um, Have you met him? I haven't gotten to. I did meet Rand. Uh, I have a picture with Rand. Um, But um, the thing is, is that when I found out about Ron Paul and started listening to him, like my first instinct was, I really wish he were my grandfather. (laughs) Like, so I got to hang out with him and learn cool stuff from him, and like. Oh my God. Not that I, I actually really like my grandparents, but like they're awesome. They're super objectivist and they're awesome. Um, and, uh, I really, <laughs> I just really love Ron. Paul. He's adorable. He's I mean, what's not to love? He's so adorable. Right. What is not to love about Ron Paul? We continue here with his statement. He says, when the bankruptcy evolves, maybe some of these pension funds are confiscated and the wars never end and bankruptcy comes forth. People will say, hey, we're getting a bad deal from this. Why don't we leave? And he added, quote, I think it's inevitable people wanting to leave will be there and the numbers will grow, unquote. Realistically, though, Paul said he doesn't think any of these groups could actually succeed. Despite Succeed the founders, seceding. Yeah, despite the founders' own deep belief in secession, they gained America's independence from Europe, after all. He said the Civil War set the precedent that secession would carry very, very bad results. Well, He's, I think if you see uh, states, uh, you know, regions seceding around the world, that you might have a better chance of seeing it here in the United States. I think what so. do they mean? You can't succeed. There were 14 it succeed at seceding. Yeah, yeah it, it, there were 14 countries that s- s- seceded from Soviet Russia peacefully. Well, and let's not forget the United States seceded from Great Britain. <laughs> if you can secede from from uh, the Soviet Union peacefully, I mean, I anybody can do it. Sorry, it is an Soviet unfor- Russia Union secedes from you. It is unfortunate. <laughs> That Ron Paul isn't as as gung ho as you know might like him to be, 
Um, and, and it's a common objection that, oh, well, if, if a state secedes, then there's going to be violence. The federal government will roll in tanks Not or they'll drop a nuke or something like that. And it sounds like Ron Paul is playing into that fear. And that's unfortunate. It is unfortunate because I'm telling you, if you can get away from Soviet Russia, like... Worst right. communist regime ever. You can get away from the U.S. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And there's reasons why I think it would work now that it didn't work in the 1800s. Namely, that we've got information that travels instantly. And so any kind, of, any kind of invasion or something crazy like that, people are going to know, and they're going to know when it happens. More coming up. You can take control here. This is Free Talk Live. Secession, how do you feel about it? Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel it any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Summertime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's 
Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free at 855 450 free. Secession back on the table for discussion. One of my favorite topics, and Ron Paul's on board. He's saying we need to have more secessionist movements in the United States. He likes that we already have some, you know, Vermont and Texas and New Hampshire and Alaska. These these are all places with existing secession movements. Uh, they should be bigger. So, of course, the more you talk about these things, the more realistic they become. And so that's the, one of the points of bringing it up here on the radio wave. So you'll have an excuse to, uh, you know, go wherever it is you're going. Maybe you're driving somewhere, driving to work or uh, going home, sitting down for some dinner or late night snack. Why not just ask your friends or family members or coworkers? Hey, what do you think about that whole Scottish secession thing? And just throw it out there and see what people think about it. I would use the, use the word independence yeah, if I that's were true. you. Secession's kind of a dirty word. Unfortunately, in the United States, it certainly seems to be that way. But if yeah. you use the if you're using the secession word in regards to another country, I don't think it matters. Like if you're in the United States and you say the word secession, that's a good it's, point. You're a bigot. If you if you're talking about Scotland seceding mm. from England, then I think you're sort of uh, you're you're saying from that label. Wait a minute. Hold on. Would a, if a black person used the term secession within the United States, would they be a bigot? I don't think they would necessarily be a bigot. They'd just be uh, confused. And Let's misled. go to Dennis in Durham listening to Talk Radio 850. Hey, Dennis. Hello there. Hey, welcome. Uh, I was wondering about something. I heard about a bank selling silver coins, one ounce coins for $50. And then he was promising to buy those coins back $50. And he got into some kind of trouble with the feds because they were trying to say that's a currency if, if you buy it back at the same price. Where did you hear, where did you hear about this? Uh, it was a couple years ago. Uh, he's up in the mountains of uh, North Carolina. Are you talking about the Liberty dollar? I think so. Okay. I think that's what he was calling it. Based out of Asheville? I believe so. Perhaps. All right. So just to clarify, that's not exactly what was going on. Uh, you're, if, oh. if we're talking about the same thing, uh, and I suspect that, that we are, that you're talking about Bernard von Nothaus. He is the founder of the Liberty Dollar. He had been charged uh, in the, by the federal uh, goons with counterfeiting and ultimately, oh. sadly, was found guilty by a jury of his so-called peers He's actually now, he's in his late 60s, I think, and he's now actually awaiting sentencing and has been awaiting sentencing for four years. Four years, yeah. It's been years. I know that. Point. The raid that okay. happened on the offices in Asheville happened all the way back in 2007. We were talking about it on this very show when it went down. In fact, I was a Liberty Dollar associate, as it was called. And I, so I can tell you, you know, I've got personal experience with this. I, I still have uh, Liberty Dollars, and now the federal government considers those to be contraband, from what I understand. Yeah, they owe me some money. Uh, yeah, they stole some of my money, too, because well, what was going on was the Liberty Dollar was, and could be argued still is, uh, the most popular alternative currency in a silver form that existed uh, at that time. You could argue that Bitcoin's more popular now. But uh, as far as something that you could physically hold on to, that you could trade for other things, it was very, very popular. And there were millions of dollars worth of Liberty Dollars that were out there, so to speak. Yeah, I may or may not have some of my own. <laughs> right, because it's contraband. <laughs> it's contraband. Um, but yeah, so what was going on was there was no guarantee that somebody would buy it back typically. There were some folks who were these Liberty Associate types or what they called regional currency officers who would typically offer to buy the currency back, but they weren't obligated to do so by any sort of contract. It was just a service that they provided for people. Um, so there was no fraud going on here, in my opinion. In fact, if you pull up, if you you know, like Google a picture of the Liberty Dollar, and you look at the actual silver piece, there were th there were two types of things. There was a silver piece, and then there was a warehouse receipt. And the warehouse receipts sort of you know looked like paper. Not they didn't look like dollars, but they were different colors and things like that. They had more security features than the U.S. dollar did. There was actually a, it was a better currency, arguably than the than the U.S. dollar. And of course, what really made it better was that it was backed by silver. 
silver, uh, at least until the federal government came into the mint where the silver was being stored, held them at gunpoint, basically, and stole all the silver and the gold that was backing the Liberty Dollar warehouse receipts. Now, what they couldn't do was steal the actual silver in our pockets and in our you know possession, and so there's still a bunch of Liberty Dollar silver pieces out there. I still have the warehouse receipts, which are now backed by nothing. Of course, interestingly yeah. enough, when they did the raid, the value of the warehouse receipts skyrocketed. You could go and sell a one dollar warehouse receipt on eBay and get like twenty bucks for it. Yeah. So the inadvertently, the federal government, by creating contra turning it into contraband, made them more valuable over time. And but if you look at the the Liberty Dollar um, pieces, the actual silver pieces. They okay, yeah. There was a picture of the Statue of Liberty on the the front of it, but that's where the the similarities ended. Right, as it's far like purple as sometimes or brown. Well, or, no, you're talking about the warehouse receipts. I'm talking yeah. about the the actual okay. silver piece. They, I don't think they were alleging the warehouse receipts were the the controversial thing that the the uh, the uh, well, they the sure sc- confiscated the skill, the silver that backed them. They certainly did because they're a criminal gang and they you know they steal things from people is what they do. But I think the real claim to the so-called counterfeiting was that well these liberty pieces these silver pieces they're made to, made to look like the U.S. government currency. But what U.S. government currency has a phone number and a website on it? I don't know about you, but I've never seen that on U.S. government currency. It wouldn't have fooled me. And uh, I don't know how do you feel about that, Dennis? Have you ever seen one of these things? That might be a good idea. A website on the on the dollar, and and there's uh, some website that says follow George. Yeah. Where's, where's George? George? Where's, where's George? George? Com? Yeah. Where's George? Yeah. Not related to the Liberty Dollar. Where's George? But interesting. No, it's a great site. I think Where's George is fascinating. Uh, where's George's uh, stamp that you can get. And you can, you know, put the stamp on a dollar bill. Sometimes you'll receive bills that have the Where's George stamp. You go to yep. their website, you type in the serial number, and it shows you every time someone else has bothered to enter that bill in their system. And it kind of gives you some idea of how far a, a dollar bill can travel which over just, a period of time. Which just really shows you how disgusting they really are. <laughs> Meaning that they go through dirty, a bunch of people. Dirty yeah, little do- pieces of linen. Dollar bills are like the most They're disgusting yeah. thing I can think of. Why would anyone want to use this? So, Dennis, I, I did I clear some? Of that up for you? Yeah, I hadn't heard about the counterfeiting thing, uh, accusation. Yeah, it was a really sad story because we've actually had Bernard on the show a number of times in the past. Super nice guy. He wasn't uh, trying to hide anything. In fact, the whole purpose of the are. Liberty Dollar, the whole purpose of the Liberty Dollar was to educate people. When you handed this thing to someone, the idea was to get a conversation started about silver and gold and uh, alternative currencies and and start, you know, a conversation with whether it's a storekeeper or a clerk or somebody or just a friend. You know, what is this? Why, you know, why does it look different? Why does it feel different from the federal government's money? Because anytime you take a, a, a liberty dollar and you put it next to any of the government currency, it looks better. You know, it's silver. Well, I'm for anything that makes people think. That's awesome. Yeah, well, the government isn't, and that's why they targeted these guys, because he was becoming too popular. It was actually during the Ron Paul campaign in 2007 when he was gearing up to for the 2008 presidential run. It's true. Bernard von Nothaus had just printed up, I don't know, thousands of these Ron Paul silver liberties. and co- He was actually doing copper rounds Coppers, as well. Copper, silvers, golds, and, and platinums. So his purpose was to promote Ron Paul's campaign with this, and that's when they swooped in. They came and confiscated thousands of these Ron Paul copper and silver rounds, ah. and, and they still have them. He's, st- he's trying to get the people's money back, and it's just, you know, he may die before uh, this actually That's what they're hoping out. on. I mean— yeah. Let's be honest. The only reason that they're not okay with this currency is because they don't have a big enough of a profit margin off of it. Well, yeah, yeah they see nothing from Yeah, this. the government is just upset because, you know, somebody's making money and if we're not getting a cut. Super, yeah. I'm sorry? So Go ahead, Dennis. He, uh, paying a, uh, a sales tax on those? If you sell silver, do you uh, pay a sales tax? I don't know. Uh, about it depends that. on I, if you do it privately. It would, if I think that in most cases you're buying it across state lines, so you so probably no. didn't have to. Yeah, I don't know. Is guess. there a sales tax there in North Carolina? Yeah, six percent. So it I suspect, is in most states. I suspect that if you were to purchase it in North Carolina, then you may have to pay a sales tax. But I never mm-hmm. paid a sales tax because I was in Florida buying from North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Okay. 
Thanks, okay. Dennis, Thanks for the lot. call tonight. I appreciate Thank hearing you. from you. Yeah, it's a fascinating case. Anybody who wants to learn, I mean, I've given you kind of the summary of what happened with the Liberty Dollar, but it's a tragic, fascinating case that I highly recommend that you look into. I mean, they basically went after America's most successful alternative currency because it became too successful. He got to the point where it was having an impact to some extent, and the Fed swooped in. They stole all the gold and the silver backing this uh, this alternative currency. Yeah, I'd forgotten about the part, the part about this being related to the Ron Paul campaign, but I think mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. Could have been a coincidence, Mark, that they happened to target him at that time. Uh, but it, either way, a lot of people lost a lot of money on that deal. I've got all these warehouse receipts that I can't exchange for anything now. Because that was the idea behind the warehouse receipt was if you had enough of these warehouse receipts, you could exchange it for an ounce of silver. This makes me think of the uh, 23 and Me kit, too. I mean, you just and you can't redeem your stats from 23 and Me. I'm not familiar with that. You'll have to tell us oh, more here in awesome. a moment. Hour number three is on the way. You can take control and bring up anything you want. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, October 2nd, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.03 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,212 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $383. Antiwar.com reports early Wednesday morning, Ukrainian forces shelled a school playground in the rebel capital of Donetsk, killing at least 10 people, one of whom was identified as a rebel fighter. The other nine were all labeled civilians. The attack occurred shortly after the school day began, so none of the students themselves were at the playground at the time. However, the school's biology teacher, along with one of the students' parents, were among the slain. The Ukrainian military, as usual, inexplicably claimed that the rebel rebels had launched the attack on a school in their own territory, while the rebels insisted that the military was targeting their fighter and that the death toll was higher with two other unidentified victims among those killed. It's the second incident in Donetsk this week after nine soldiers were killed in a clash with rebels on Monday near the airport. Despite this, the ceasefire continues to hold across much of the nation. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. 
Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. ESPN reports Georgia Tech fans won't need to hit the ATM to pay for snacks and drinks at games soon as the school reached a deal to become the first college program to use Bitcoin for concessions. The school announced the agreement on Wednesday with BitPay, which is a Bitcoin payment processing company. It will allow fans to purchase concessions in the student section of Bobby Dodd Stadium using the cryptocurrency beginning with Saturday night's home game against Miami. Georgia Tech Athletic Director Mike Bobinski said in a statement released by the school, we look forward to working with BitPay to make Bitcoin a viable payment option for our students and fans. At Georgia Tech, we are always looking to lead in innovative ways, and this partnership gives us an opportunity to do so by integrating this new technology at a sports venue and in the daily lives of our students. Students on campus will also be able to use Bitcoin for dining and shopping on campus. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports U.S. Secret Service Director Julia Pearson resigned under fire on Wednesday after a series of security lapses came to light that exposed gaping holes in the protective cocoon around President Obama. Pearson, in her position for just 18 months, faced mounting calls from lawmakers to step down in the fallout from a September 19th incident in which an Iraq War veteran with a knife scaled the White House fence, sprinted across the lawn, and got deep inside the mansion before an off-duty the agent stopped him. Pearson had told a congressional committee on Tuesday that she took full responsibility for gaps in presidential security. On Wednesday, she offered her resignation in a meeting with Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson, who accepted it. White House spokesman Josh Ernest said Obama believed Pearson's resignation was in the best interest of the agency and that recent and accumulating reports of security lapses led the president to conclude new leadership was required at the Secret Service. The development came a day after the disclosure that in a violation of protocol, an armed private security contractor with a criminal record rode on an elevator with Obama in Atlanta earlier this month and took pictures and video of the president from his phone. While all presidents have faced death threats, Obama is believed to have received more than any of his predecessors. In response to calls from lawmakers for an independent probe into the September 19th fence-jumping incident, the Homeland Security Department will establish a panel of independent experts to investigate what happened and report back by December 15th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. So, Shelby, let's start with you. You say that our bogs and marshes should actually be paved over. That's right. Absolutely, Brooke. These things are nothing but dead body dumping pits that make life easy for murderers. And it's disgusting to me that sickos like Mr. Popkin actually want to protect these things. All right, well, Mr. Oh. Popkin, how do you respond to this? Bogs and marshes are important ecosystems that should be protected. I mean, oh. they're, they're already being endangered. Oh, excuse me. As long as these human landfills remain open for business, what we're essentially saying to the criminal element is, sure, do whatever you like and throw the evidence here in this federally protected black hole. Okay. I testified before Senator Chuck Grassley, who wanted to lift federal protection uh, uh, on these lands, and what right. I told him is exactly what uh -huh. I'm going to tell you now. And where is Chuck Grassley right now, sir? Uh... Could it be that he's sitting at the bottom of a bog somewhere? Why else would you be so hot on these wetlands if you aren't a murderer yourself? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You 
can bring up anything you want. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can also join us via Skype. The Skype username is lrn.fm. So feel free to reach out in whatever way you would like. There's all kinds of stuff still to come here tonight. The Hong Kong protests. We haven't talked about those at all yet here on Free Talk Live, and they're big. So Huge. Yeah, it's worth talking about. We'll get into that here in a little bit. But actually, first, we'll continue with some of the comments from Ron Paul about secession. He has come out and gone on the record to say that he thinks there needs to be more secession movements in the United States. Unfortunately, he tempered his statements by saying that he doesn't really believe they'll be successful in the U.S. because, you know, the whole Civil War thing kind of settled that deal. And I'm sad to see Ron Paul, you know, make make a statement like that. But it's not an uncommon perspective uh, for, from people to believe that it'll happen. It happened before. It'll happen again. The feds will ro- roll in tanks if you try to secede. <sighs> and really, that shouldn't that be an indicator? Like, if you think that about secession, if you think that if a state secedes in the United States or from the United States, that then the feds are going to roll in tanks, shouldn't that be an indicator as to yet another reason why you should secede? Because these people are so crazy and so dangerous that they would roll in tanks to try to crush a peaceful movement? Because that's what I recommend is peaceful secession. Try not to fire on any government uh, facilities. you know, Unless they fire on you first. But I, I, I think, don't know. I still don't think that violence is the solution. I think that it... Well, I mean, if you're being shot at, you have to either shoot back or hope that you can hide well enough. You have the right um, to do so, die. but it may I mean, not be prudent. Too. But here's the thing. If you take the amount of violence that has been committed by the federal government over you know, its entire existence and then you compare it to what the violence would be if we seceded even if you just maximize the potential of it like really really amp it up it's still less so i'm gonna go with secession Paul actually Logic. comes out here and he speaks to National Journal in their article, which we'll link to you on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter here in a little bit. But he says, quote, by our history, the heavy hand of the federal government would come down. They'd probably shoot him. So he's he's I mean he's just coming right out and saying he thinks that they would <laughs> they would get that violent. I, I don't him. think they would. I don't think they would because it would be a huge PR catastrophe for the federal government. I mean, we already know that people don't trust them and that they don't like them. You know, Congress has terrible approval ratings and things like that. Uh, but if they start to actually slaughter in mass uh, the people of one state, that's going to look really, really bad for them. I'm yeah. not looking looking to get shot whether it's in mass or not, you know? <laughs> so what does that mean? I'd prefer the federal government not shoot me. What do you think they would do? I have no idea. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to secession, I, I don't... I consider secession to be a philosophical issue, not a practical issue. Uh, I don't think you're anywhere near uh, near it in the United States. I mean, one the, out of four uh, people in the United States support their state seceding. Yeah, well, that's, you know, I would say getting near it. Twenty five percent ain't nothing. Do you think? That, what do you mean that's nothing? Do you think that fifty one percent of people should be able to um, decide in a given state should be able to decide that, that state Absolutely. secedes? Absolutely, I don't. Yep. You um, know, I can see both viewpoints here, though. I think it should be like 66%. I mean, if it takes... It's just another arbitrary number. It is just another arbitrary number. I think you should be able to secede yourself. But mm. if we're talking about the practical, practical applications of a state, if you're going to have you know this idea of voting, I think that it should be a larger number okay. to get things well, done. Well, you're probably going to have to have... That's, sorry, Lauren. You're probably going to have to have that happen in New Hampshire because you probably have to pass some sort of constitutional yeah, amendment. Yeah, you would have to pass a constitutional amendment. you would need to have, amendment. like, what, two-thirds or something, something like that? Something like that. I mean, we're talking about peaceful secession, so the only way to peacefully secede would be a, a vote. So, yeah. I mean, the the thing is, is that if you're going to do that, then you need a philosophical renaissance first because you sure. need to get the majority of the state on board. So even if we're not going to have a nationwide um, philosophical renaissance, we need one here in New Hampshire. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, I think it'll work a lot better. I've been talking to just regular Joe Schmo on the street, and I'll tell you what. About here, secession? Ab- about anything, like libertarian-wise. And I'll tell you what. Here in New Hampshire, freedom is alive, even with people that are quote-unquote liberal. I'm like, you're not a liberal. You're a libertarian. 
it's so much it's so funny talking to these people here in New Hampshire that are like, I am a liberal. And I'm like, what do you think of, you know, businesses being free? Oh, I'm all for that. Uh-huh. Uh you're not a liberal. You're a libertarian. <laughs> well, the classic definition of liberal is libertarian, right? Like right. And I liberal. explain that to them. I'm like, you're classically liberal, sure. And they're like, oh. Interesting. In, and they're like open to it. It's so cool. more, a little bit more here from Ron Paul uh, from NationalJournal.com. In typical fashion, Paul argued the principle of secession was more important than what could actually happen in reality. It's the threat, he said, that's important to keep the federal government in check. Quote, I think what's most important is we have a concrete right to secede. Even if we never had any secession or any state declare independence, we would be so much better off because there would always be this threat. Once the threat of a state leaving was removed, it was just open-door policy for the federal government to expand itself and run roughshod out over the states because the states couldn't do much. Uh, unquote. And and I you know I do support the idea of nullification, and that's sort of what he's getting at there is is having state governments say no to the federal government, not fully secede, but to simply say, oh, you want to f- tell us to do this thing? You know, like National ID is a good example of that. There was many years ago this uh, National ID card that was proposed by the feds, and many state governments said, no, nah, we're not going to participate in that. Now, Unfortunately, the reasons they did it had nothing to do with freedom. The reason the state governments didn't want to participate was because the feds weren't giving them money to implement the national ID card. That's why they didn't want to I'm do it. I'm surprised they didn't threaten to remove funding like they did with uh, the speed limits. Or wait, the drinking age. I'm sorry. So you remember how the drinking age yes. came about? Yeah. So, I mean, most people were going to, I, most states were at 18 um, and some were even younger than that. And uh you, the gov- federal government stepped in and said, if you don't bring it up to 21, we're going to pull your state funding. So I'm surprised they didn't pull the same thing on in this case. Yep. Well, that's what we Some need. Kind of that's surprising. Well, that's something that we need to see happen, whether it's in New Hampshire or somewhere else, is state governments to turn to the federal government and say, no, you know what? We've decided we're going to lower the drinking age and you can have your million dollars or need whatever. You. Yeah. Whatever the arbitrary amount is that they're still bribing the states with for that. Uh, yeah, we'd rather have more freedom than your $2 million. Thanks, but no thanks. Goodbye. Thanks, but no tanks. Yeah. So there you go. That's the latest from Ron Paul. He's out there pushing the secessionist idea, and I appreciate it. Even though he may not be in the belief that it's possible, he's at the very least putting the idea out there. And I'm sorry, Mark, I think one out of four people in the United States is a damn good starting point for secession. I think it's But it's not great. enough for a vote. No, it's not enough for a vote. But again, it's just we're starting a conversation. And for one in four people to already feel strongly enough that, yes, I support my state leaving the union now. Let's do this. Uh, that's great. And there's remember, that poll that showed the one out of four was a recent poll, so it was pretty fresh. And there were only like 53% that opposed it. So you had 25% saying, yeah, let's do this. 53% saying, nope, stay together. And then the rest of the people were undecided. So you got close to another quarter who really don't know. I mean, those people are on the fence. They could move towards secession. Right. I mean, I don't disagree with you, Ian, but uh, here's where I'm coming from. I've been pushing philosophical renaissance for a long time, uh, way before I moved to New Hampshire. And this is really the first time that I've even considered secession was after I moved here. Really? Yeah. I, I, I didn't think it was possible because I think our country needed a philosophical renaissance um, because, A, a lot of people are going to die as soon as you take out all those federal, you know, um, programs. That's right. They'll be choking on magnets. Care. Well, they won't have, <laughs> they won't, no, they won't know how to take care of themselves because they've been coddled so long. Oh, but I you think mean with like the, social security yeah, or something? Yeah, but with a, with a philosophical renaissance, they'll understand how to take care of themselves before we take away the programs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and that's the thing is that here in New Hampshire, this is the first place I've actually felt like these people are grown up enough to be able to handle their own The Granite Staters are definitely an independent lot. If, no they doubt. are. They're awesome. If New Hampshire decides to secede in some kind of libertarian vote, and I mean, we're talking about a fantasy world today, um, anybody who wants, who, who needs government programs that doesn't feel like they're going to get them in the new libertarian New Hampshire can move right across the border. Vermont. It's only yeah. 30 miles no matter where you are or something like yeah. that. Vermont or Massachusetts. You know, I disagree with you for the first time, Mark. Why I don't think it's a fantasy world. I think it's totally possible. Well, it's not. Uh, anything's possible, there you go. but it's not today. <laughs> Toll free. Of course it's not today. It's going to take probably at least a decade. 855 450 free. We need to get more people to move here to make it more possible. So join the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. We'll come back with more. Your thoughts are welcome. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. 
I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. What is going on in Hong Kong? We are going to talk about that. We haven't really addressed it at all here on Free Talk Live. There are... I don't know how many thousands of people in the streets, but more than you can fit in one camera uh, view, that's oh, for sure. I'd There's love to know the number. A lot of people there. Uh, and what are they there for? We'll talk about that. Your thoughts are welcome as well. You can bring up anything at 855-450-FREE. Plus, uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers at freedomsphoenix.com are provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. 
freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. That's freedomsphoenix.com. You can sign up for their free daily dispatch. In fact, Mark, you and I, we're going down to Orlando for Coins in the Kingdom. Coming up here, we're leaving tomorrow, and uh, that doesn't mean you'll be up without Free Talk Live. Daryl and Ellen will be here Friday night, and then Mark and I will uh, be broadcasting live from Coins in the Kingdom on Saturday and Sunday night. And I happen to know that uh, the founder of Freedoms Phoenix, Ernie Hancock, will be in attendance at that event. Excellent. So I'm sure we'll be able to drag him over and get him on the air because he's always exciting. He is just a, a barrel of a great fun. talk show host. Uh, so we're going to continue with your calls and thoughts before we talk about Hong Kong. First, let's go to the phones and to Alma listening in Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live, Alma. Hey, sweetie, this is a sore spot on me. Everybody better remember the war between the North and the South. I have one talk show this week, and he's supposed to be a Southerner, and he's going, no one's, half the people didn't stand up to pray for that flag. I said, did you forget what flag came down here and took us over? I said, did you all forget they oppressed us, and we still are oppressed? You know, the um, there's certainly it's true that uh, the standard of living is lower in the um, the south, south than it is in the north. It's yeah. difficult to know why. Um, you know, maybe it's government welfare programs and you know limit, limits on earnings. I have no, no idea. It was only a few factory jobs here and there. It, the what jobs we had was just blue collar jobs. You know, Obama prevented Boeing from moving from I think it was Washington to uh, more be North or South Carolina hmm. uh, recently. So there's wow. you know, there I there's an why. argument. How did he do that? They Say we're not going to renew? I mean, we're not going to contract this government, with you? this government hates the South. They always have since we tried to secede. So everybody better remember, they will attack you. District they 13. <laughs> the South will rise again. Thank you, Alma, for the they call tonight. They will win. I appreciate it. <laughs> Toll free number 855 450 free. I like her. <laughs> she's I'm funky. Not sure, I'm not sure. She is plucky. <laughs> I am not I like sure her. that I, I am uh, looking for the South to rise again. <laughs> no. I mean, it's just a saying. I think that uh, I, I think that states would be better off individually. I think you're you're better off with smaller areas than larger ones. Oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. sort of agreements. Have you seen um, oh, what's it called? Arcadia, the Arcadia movement. Uh, I used to live in a place where there was a little town called Arcadia nearby, but they I don't had, think that's what you're talking no. about. And, and their rodeo was the granddaddy of them all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's um, the a lot of people want the uh, oh Arcadia's the northeast, right? The yeah, northeast? it's uh, they no, want Newfoundland. They want Maine. Yeah, they want all those states to secede together. Yeah, I, that's I don't just I just don't I see that as see being that realistic. I can't see that many people getting on board with no, this. No, I don't either. I think this is the only place it could happen. I honestly. don't want anything to do with Vermont. Maybe and Maine. I'm just you know Ver, Vermont and Maine are not as freedom oriented as New Hampshire, so I wouldn't want no. to team up with them in no. any way, shape, or form. I don't think you're going to get that kind of support. Yeah, I think the bigger that you make it, the easier it would be for another you know power to rise. The I, harder I it'll be to it. accomplish too. Exactly, that's that's true. Uh, and and that's the first argument. The second argument is really just that I think that it there would be so much more control. If we seceded together, I, I want to keep it as small as possible. Right. Heck, I, I'd like to just, you know, free Keene and Manchester. Yeah, it's That'd bad be cool. enough to have, I mean, to have a controller in Concord, to have this controlling government in Concord, New Hampshire. It'd be worse to have it located in Vermont or wherever the capital of Arcadia uh, would end up being. Yeah, I want nothing to do with that. And if, if you're having trouble getting secessionists on board with this Arcadia idea, then it's probably not going to fly. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think that. I think that there's some arguments for it, like the region has a lot of similarities and things like that. But you have these arbitrary geopolitical lines that are drawn on maps. And for whatever reason, those have momentum and gravitas for people. And it's unlikely that you're going to see them somehow disappear and well, yeah, drawn into a different way. Well, yeah, because then you'd have to way. create a whole new political system. At the very least, if New Hampshire were to secede or Vermont or wherever, they already have a constitution, right? So New Hampshire, they have themselves a constitution before the United States had a uh, a constitution and so you wouldn't have to start from scratch if you were going to do uh, an arcadia thing which would include maine newfoundland canada you know all these other places vermont and new hampshire etc then they'd all have to be building a new constitution and we know what that what happens when you do that these days they'd throw everything in but the kitchen sink you know there'd be the people in vermont would be like well we need to have uh universal health care in there obviously everybody just start all over again 
Yeah. It would. And that's a terrible idea. Everybody's got a, got a right to uh, four weeks off every time you get a toothache. You right. know, like the whole deal. All that crap would be thrown in there. So, nope, sorry, not it's, excited about that it's idea. The same, it's the same thing as minarchy. And this is why I'm not on board with minarchy. Because as what is long minarchy? as you... What is that? Uh, minarchy is where you believe in a small state. Mm-hmm. Instead of, you know, you just want a smaller state. You don't want anarchy, which is no state. Um, so the thing is, is that... If you go with minarchy, eventually you're going to end up exactly where we are right now. Because we were, min- I, no, I'm sorry, the government was minarchist when we started this country. And so was every government because that's where it starts is small. Every government has to start small. That's how it works. And then eventually they build up their power and, you know, yeah. and they take it us seems all to over. Be the, it seems to be the pattern, right? Like Thomas Jefferson said something to the effect of, uh, you know, for every generation, uh, you know, they need a new government. Government, um, and then the uh, the the very famous that uh, the tree of liberty must uh, occasionally be watered by the blood of uh, tyrants and patriots, or or whatever the the, the statement is. Uh huh. I you know I don't know. It's not like that many tries have been taken at creating a minarchist state. Maybe they can do. Maybe it can be done better. But I think that people have the right to secession. I think you have the right to choose that you don't want to be governed by anybody and the governing documents of many of the states say things like uh, you know government of right comes from the consent of the governed and the question is is whether this what is a, a, load. A, a collective uh, um, you know p- people or this is an individual for people like can you opt out should you be able to opt out when you never opted in you mm-hmm. know you remember when I mark when I brought up that I disagreed with you that it was a dream minarchy is a dream that's what's a dream. Well, at the very least, if uh, if one state, a small state like New Hampshire or Vermont, secedes, then at least then you can have this minarchy within reach. You can easily go to Concord uh, or Montpelier, uh, and you can uh, you can talk to those people in New Hampshire. One of the reasons why New Hampshire was chosen as the destination for the Free State Project is these state reps make a hundred dollars a year. They're not professional politicians. They're people that you can go on the state website and get their home phone number. You can't do that in wherever you live, most likely. So you're with me. If people voluntarily want a local government, then there's nothing wrong with that, right? Well, I think that if you've got 100% consent, then there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's what I think. I think people can move into small communities and start a government if that's what they want. How they can have universal health care in that small homeowner, area. That's what a homeowner's association is, right? Right. There yeah. you go. There you go. Toll-free numbers 855 More coming up. Hong Kong. What's happening out there? We'll focus on that and also take your calls about whatever's on your mind. You can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. There's more Free Talk Live coming up. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you going to display? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? 
Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. up anything you want right here 855-450-3733 your comments on secession if you'd like ron paul says he he thinks we need to have more secession movements uh in the united states and i happen to agree with that you're uh, welcome to bring up anything as well that is the point of free talk live so join us here on the air at 855-450-FREE and via skype our skype username is lrn.fm and um, there are bounties available right now, bounties that you can claim at BitcoinBountyHunter.com. One's worth somewhere around like $15,000. Uh, use your investigative skills and collect the bounty. You can place your own bounty or add one, add to the ones that are there. The authorities, they're not going to be solving any of these cases anytime soon. It'll be done by people like you, people that profit from their work and skill. Go check out bitcoinbountyhunter.com it's bitcoinbountyhunter.com let's continue here we'll talk more about the or we'll talk about the hong kong situation in a moment but we've got nathan on the line in texas nathan you're on free talk live with ian lauren and mark you know it's funny you mentioned ron paul wasn't there a video of him in front of, in front of a confederate flag one time i don't know i haven't seen it that's a no controversial idea. claim can you back that up well let's uh, just go google yeah, it and search. I, saw it on, I saw it on a news I saw it on a newscast a few years ago, but I had to hunt for it. Um, I'll see if I can do that, save that up for you guys. Okay. Uh, I had a question. I had a question. Does for it mean Warren. anything to um, you, though? I mean, that he might be in front of a Confederate flag? Because it's a controversial flag, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the intent of the newscast I was watching was here. So that, that would be the yep, only thing. I see it. I got it pulled up here, JPEG. Absolutely. Looks like it to me. Either that or it's a really darn good Photoshop. Whoa. So what? <laughs> okay, well. Well, it's just uh, it's a very controversial image, so it's uh, I don't know. It it seems like it's a very useful way to smear people who talk about secession. What's controversial um, controversial about it? Well, I think it's obvious. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, and maybe it's not obvious. People, yeah. Uh, so I had a question for Lauren about. Oh, apparently, um, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to answer your question, Lauren, <laughs> but he wants to ask you a question. No, we're just going to assume Sorry, it's controversial. What question? Sorry, Go ahead. What question? 
She asked you what's controversial about it. Well, um, I guess the Confederate flag is controversial to some individuals. I mean, I don't consider it controversial, but I mean, it's a flag like a lot of other national flags. I don't see that as controversial. Um, I haven't been given a reason to think it's controversial. Well, I mean, a lot of people associate it with slavery. So, I mean, whether they're correct to do that or not, I don't know. It was a flag raised to represent um, people that wanted to uh, be free. I, I don't from the government tyranny that they were facing. So I wouldn't wear I, it. it and I it wouldn't was speak enough, in front of it. There was slavery long before that flag. That flag has nothing to do with it. Well, yeah, it's just that the, the cause they were rallying around for a lot of people, they view that as you know, enslaving others. So I can kind of see why people would be hesitant to be associated with this flag. Yeah, a lot of people. Um, that's why I like to use. I like to use the term independence, like you suggested, instead yeah. of secession, just for that reason. Yeah, so I think a lot of people are misinformed about what actually started the Civil War. And it was actually a dispute over a fort. Uh, the government was trying to take over a fort that belonged to the South and use it. And well, the South didn't want the them to use fire. it. That's what sparked the, the, right. the, the gun, yeah, gunshots. Right. Right. And our government, I'm sorry, the U.S. government, the they made it seem like it was about slavery so that they could get the backing of the north. It it was complete it was a complete propaganda. Well, the, play. four of the four of the states that seceded had the term slavery right in their um secession documents. I mean to 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 try to wrest um secession of the south from slavery is a very historically difficult thing to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, plus well, there's a uh, the fact that Lincoln didn't mention, you know, in that inaugural address, he talked about how it was about money and tariffs. So, so yeah, you Lincoln are, was uh, a very a bad man. sell right now, Nathan. I, why are you not calling with Skype anymore? You spoiled me with all the Skype calls, and now the last two calls, it's been uh, on your this phone. Horrifying cell phone. Uh, yeah. I was hoping that you wouldn't notice, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's um, really noticeable. I'm gonna have to let you go. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Oh, that's you. too bad. I wanted to hear what question he asked. Yeah, I don't know. It was just getting really bad on that uh, on that connection. Maybe I guess, I guess he said something about internet troubles. I don't know. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Yeah, if you've got Skype, uh, please use it because <laughs> really, it yeah, almost always sounds better. I just want to urge everybody to actually look at some stuff about Lincoln, some uh, stuff that exposes what you mean he was how, really like, doing. He didn't really care about slavery. No, he didn't. Not even a little Read bit. Read the second inaugural address. That ought to clear everything up for yeah. you. What's he saying um, that? Uh, well, I just can't quote it. Um, essentially, that his, um, you know, his his intentions aren't to his intentions to to preserve the union. That slavery was wasn't his, the issue. Yeah, that was Consider for a second that uh, Lincoln presided over the entire span of the Civil War for states that were not required to give up slavery. It was um, uh, Maryland and uh, I can't remember. I can't name them all off. Before the states did not secede and did not give up slavery in Lincoln's lifetime. So. To suggest somehow that the the you know the, the North wanted to get rid of that the the Civil War for the North was about getting rid of slavery. I'm not sure it was. There are plenty of abolitionists that fought, and lots of Quakers who were certainly abolitionists. Uh, they 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 stopped being Quakers in order to fight in the Civil War for wow. the North. But uh, I mean, you know, every other country on Earth that has gotten rid of slavery has done it without a war. So it's not necessary, necessarily. Hong Kong story is from CNN. A pro-democracy activists took their fight on Thursday to the doorstep of Hong Kong's chief executive, sitting down outside his office gates to express their dissatisfaction with him and the central government in Beijing. Uh, some demonstrators say the next step could be occupying the inside of government buildings. Mm. And by the way, if you have not yet seen the photos or video from this particular these protests, it's huge. It's tremendous. I mean, this this makes Occupy look like nothing in comparison. If, if those of you who recall Occupy from a few years ago, uh, in you know, Occupy, Occupy Wall Street and Oakland and all these other various places, have you seen the pictures of the uh, the Hong Kong protesters cleaning up their messes too? No, I heard about that though. It's funny. Very, uh, very smart. Maybe the climate change people could have figured that out in New York. It would be a drastic move, but one protest leader said it might be necessary to get officials' attention and bring about change. We still can't get a normal, acceptable response, said student leader Joshua Wong, age 17. He uh, told that to CNN. This is the final action for us. 
In some minds, the confrontation has been brewing ever since Hong Kong transitioned in 1997 from British to Chinese control. Mm -hmm. But tensions, and by the way, that uh, 17-year-old would have just barely been born at that time. But tensions have uh, risen after a late August decision giving Beijing control over the slate of Hong Kong chief executive candidates in 2017. Current chief executive C.Y. Leung says that year's election is good for citizens because it will let the city's 5 million eligible voters pick a winner rather than a 1,200-member committee stacked with Beijing loyalists that chose past leaders. Strong sentiments on the other side have spilled in recent days into large-scale, peaceful civil disobedience on the streets of the Asian financial hub. It's all been dubbed the Umbrella Revolution, after umbrellas became symbols of the movement when they were used to shield against police tear gas and pepper spray on Mm. Sunday. Yeah, I was about to say it's peaceful on one side. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know, (laughs) peaceful protest uh, normally only comes from one side. (laughs) Huge crowds. And I still haven't seen an estimate. I would like to I'd like to see someone take a shot at estimating how many people have been in the streets. I would love to see that. That would be so cool. Uh, You know, um, huge is definitely an accurate term here because there's they're tremendous. Oh my god! It, you have to see the pictures. Go on. There aren't a lot of pictures of it because the media is trying to shield you from it, um, especially over there. They don't want is that right? Out. They don't want other countries to know about it. In fact, they've asked other countries not to um, show them any support. Um, now, did you say people are sleeping in the streets? Like the protesters are out there twenty four seven. Did you say something about um, yeah, that? Yeah, they're, they're sleeping in the streets. Uh, they slept in the streets at least one night, but China's warned other countries not to support, warned mm. them not to support illegal rallies. So we may see some, seri- uh, well, the government may see some reaction from China. We'll talk more about this here in moments. I don't imagine the U.S. government is going to be under attack from China. And the obviously the pictures are getting out because no, people have internet in Hong wrist. Kong. There's more coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Summertime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for summer at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. I just heard the best sales pitch I've heard in a long time on an airplane. The flight attendant announced, if you paid more than $75 for your round trip ticket, you overpaid. This is brilliant because everybody on the flight paid more. And I was struck by how all the road warriors stopped typing and reading and working and looked up. The announcement invited us to apply for the airline's credit card. And the sign-up bonus? Enough frequent flyer miles for a free round trip. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. With some banks offering free credit cards, $75 is an outrage for an annual fee, but a bargain for airline tickets. 
For more tips on communicating more effectively, hit survivalspeech.com, where you can see how I got the CEO of another major airline to shower me with freebies. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in, bring up anything in the remaining moments right now at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Well, maybe the government of China would like to stop the pictures from coming out of Hong Kong, but as long as people have internet access, they're going to keep coming. Over at the CNN story that we're sharing with you right now, there's a Twitter feed of uh, folks just tweeting all kinds of uh, information coming out of there. De- apparently, sun ri- sun- the sun is rising as we speak out there. And uh, it's they're about ready to roll into the sixth day of these democracy protests. Now, look, I'm no fan of democracy. Democracy is just two wolves and a sheep deciding on dinner. But as Lauren was pointing out, I think during I think it was during one of the breaks, I got a lot of respect for people who will get out in the streets and actually do something. You know, who'll actually do more than just bitch and moan. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I didn't agree with what the hippies stood for, but I certainly was. I, I love reading about it because it's like, yeah, rock on. It's inspirational. Yeah, it is. Uh, I just found this. So uh, remember how I was saying that you that the the China, Chinese government has basically said, don't support these illegal, warned against supporting it. So it turns out on Monday, the British government called for the right uh, to protest to be protected and for protesters to exercise their right within the law. And the call was echoed by the U.S. with White House oh, yeah. spokesman John Josh Ernest. Well, the, the U.S. and British governments love uh, protests uh, when it doesn't happen in their country. Oh, yeah. so, so you remember how you were like, you were like, I don't think the U.S. government will see any retaliation, but I don't know. Looks like the U.S. is... Well, well what's the, that's what are so funny. Do? I mean, I mean, I mean, when we do it, they they act the same way towards us. Oh, yeah. I mean, so. if if the uh, if the troops or the, uh, the the cops in Hong Kong weren't immediately obviously different looking, you wouldn't be able to tell, right? Like, it looks like New York City. It looks like the same tactics, They're all the wearing same the, thugs. The, the same... Helmets and similar uniforms and the whole thing. They got the tear gas. They got everything that... uh, It's it's all very, very similar. It's only the protesters you can tell the difference. Huge crowds have called for true universal suffrage. This story from CNN.com, which is not just one vote per person, but no restrictions on candidates. And more generally called out Beijing for what they claim is its encroaching control on Hong Kong. And they've also demanded Leung's resignation. This is the top boss the chief executive, if you will, in Hong Kong of their government, uh, but accusing him of siding with China's central government rather than with the people of Hong Kong. That's why a few hundred students have moved from the main protest location to Leung's office. Now, there's another oh story. Uh, that story, the, the story I'm sharing with you right now, uh, was actually from Wednesday. There's a story from today, an update. Hong Kong, this is from the AP, Hong Kong's embattled leader refused demands by pro-democracy protesters to resign on Thursday and instead offered talks 
to defuse a week of massive demonstrations that have grown into the biggest challenge to Beijing's authority since China took control of the former British colony in 1997. The Hong Kong Federation of Students said in a statement early Friday they plan to join the talks with the government focused specifically on political reforms, and they reiterated that the chief executive Leung Chung Ying stepped down, saying he had lost his integrity. A wider pro-democracy group that had joined the demonstrations, Occupy Central, welcomed the talks and also insisted that Leung quit. Occupy Central hopes the talks can provide a turning point in the current political stalemate, it said in a statement. However, we reiterate our view that Chief Executive Leung Chun Ying is the one responsible for the stalemate and that he must step down. Of course, he said that he will not resign. <laughs> so it uh, doesn't sound huh. like the protests are going to go anywhere anytime soon. Shocking. And they, he, they, he won't give up power? No, of course what? not. No. That's... that's Again. That's crazy. That is I mean, a, what every tyrant has done up, up till now. I'm sorry, wow. we both talked over top of one another. What? I was just saying that's what every tyrant's done up to this point. Yeah, a man with power won't give up power? Shocking. Shocking. As protester <laughs> Cyrus Ku, age 25, explained, we want to disturb the daily life of the chief executive. This back to the CNN piece. The activists are open to talks with the leaders, but not with Leung, said one of the movement's figureheads, Lester Shum, on Wednesday. He demanded the chief executive step down or else protesters will occupy different important government buildings. So that, that may be what we see happen this weekend, uh, is the occupation of the actual government. Government buildings. Man, I really, I'm scared for these people. It marks a shift in too. location and strategy in the movement that had a large, constant presence in downtown Hong Kong. According to Kevin Chung, a 21-year-old student who helped sort recyclable trash near the main protest site, he said letting up is not an option. Quote, more pressure must be put on the government, otherwise they'll turn a blind eye to our actions. There is no clear end in sight, says CNN. The demonstrators haven't budged from their demands. If anything, they've ratcheted them up a few notches in their calls for Leung to step down. Yet both Hong Kong and Chinese officials have been adamant, refusing to move from their positions and calling the protests illegal. Suraj yep. Katra, CNN reporter. Or you mean I the United reporter. States is supporting illegal protests? <laughs> <gasps> My God. Wow. Where is the rule of law? I don't, I don't even get this. I mean, how can... How can the U.S. government stand there and hypocritically support illegal protests when there are legal protests here that they bring out guns, dogs, tear gas, and every other witch thing, tanks? It's it's the exact same way that that RT, the Russian television channel, supports all kinds of things in the United States, but they don't support those same things in Russia. It's just the states don't get along, and they do like to see trouble for the competing states out there. You know what it is? It's that it's not a threat to their power. That's true. So, you know, it's perfectly okay, you know? So I think this is fascinating, and hopefully we'll continue to follow this developing situation. To date from CNN, 53 males and 30 females, this was written on Wednesday, have been injured in the protests, according to a government media From officer. the number of people I saw out there, that's an incredibly good number. A low number. Yeah, really low. Yeah. Uh, the official would not comment on the nature or the extent of those injuries. The biggest clashes came on Sunday thus far. Aside from that day, things have been relatively calm and peaceful. Outwardly, it seems like leaders on both sides would like to keep it that way. Uh, Suja, Suraj Katra, CNN I reporter who works for a nonprofit in the city, said late, said late Wednesday that demonstrators seemed exhausted but still high-spirited and whether, uh, whether they were singing songs or applauding speeches. Sophie Richardson from the advocacy group Human Rights Watch said Hong Kong authorities have shown restraint aside from Sunday. Uh, she says that's not surprising. It's the biggest protest in the past two decades, but it's not the only one that they've dealt with. You know, protests like this make you wonder, what would it take to get this many people in the streets in the United States? Yeah, why no are clue. Americans so apathetic? What is that? Maybe it's because, I mean, things are really good in Hong Kong. The standard of living is quite high. It's a high. great place to live. So, I think there's a bigger illusion of pe- of uh, freedom here. I, I don't know. I have no answer to The people to this. are just suckers in the United States. They've been right. duped. 
Well, they don't have. But, well, the, the, okay, in, in Hong Kong, they have a very high standard of living. They do not have eagles. They don't have red, white, and blue flags. Mm. They do not have <laughs> FAA teams flying over at their sporting events. Not only that, but they've had a major change in government within right. the last t- decade and a half. Here in the United States, if you decide to stay sitting at a sporting event, um, when they say, the rocket's red glare, yeah, somebody will beat punch you, you in the face. Yeah. Whereas in Hong Kong, if you say, you know, I really <laughs> don't like the rule from <laughs> Beijing, nobody's going to have any problem at all. Right, because it was only in 1997, less than 20 years ago, when Beijing took control of the country. And right, that, and this country is controlled by Washington, D.C., and has your eyes full of stars and, and eagles. And has been for over and 200 years. banners. Yep. But I, I, I think it's important to remind the federal government what they are effectively doing by supporting this protest. What they are doing is they're supporting a movement against the state. And that will incite more movements around the world against the state. They are effectively bringing about their own doom. And I am laughing. It is funny. Well, this is one thing that I think is worth focusing on here is that numbers are what make a difference. It whether is. we're talking about protests or whether we're talking about winning elections, whatever, having people on your side is the most critical aspect to success. Oh, gosh, you can't yeah. get anywhere being the lone wolf out on the streets waving a honk if you hate taxes sign like I used to do down in Florida. There's, a, there's more than one picture of that. I got my picture in the newspaper, but taxes are still here. Right? And, we, so. and we put it up at the radio station and laughed at you. Oh, yeah? Okay, good for you. You're just jealous. You're just jealous that I had the, that I was able to go out and do something, and you cats just uh, sit around and bitch and complain. That's, that's kind of how I felt when we did the uh, independence uh, thing. So Rob and I called a bunch of You mean of the people. outreach? Yeah, the outreach. Yeah. And uh, Rob, Matthias from the Rebel Love Show, and I mm-hmm. went out and did this. And at a uh, farmer's market. But, you know, we had a big group that said they were going to come out and nobody showed up. Where were you guys? Come on. Well, that's what we need. We need more activists here. We yes. need thousands we more need doers. activists here. Exactly. And the more thousands we get, the more real key doers will come out of those thousands. Yes. So go to freestateproject.org. Get signed up for that. We'll look forward to seeing you here. Objectivistgirl.com is where you get more of Lauren. Mark, you'll be here on Saturday night. Tomorrow is the Friday night show. You'll join us, not us, but uh, Daryl and Ellen. They'll be here live. We continue live content as we head out to Orlando for Coins in the Kingdom. See you then. Have you- Free Talk Live. Three-year-old child lost his arm after being viciously attacked by a pit bull terrier earlier this month. Gosh. Now the incident has moved a state lawmaker to author legislation that will effectively ban the pit bull breed in the entire state of Oklahoma. Wow. Wouldn't um, all of uh, Mr. Wesselhoff's constituents be a little safer if, if we all just couldn't have any dogs at all? That's true. It would guarantee that no one yeah. would uh, be bitten by dogs. Right. And then and no what cats. What about cats? They scratch people. They, sc- they sc- do scratch people. And it, you know, there, it, it's, it leaves a nasty infection. It could, certainly. It, it certainly. We should ban infections, too, while mm-hmm. we're at it. I mean, while we're protecting everyone from everything. Birds can carry the flu. We know yep. that. You know, so. we should just exterminate all, all animals with teeth. <laughs> well, forget the teeth. <laughs> the birds have no teeth. I say we kill them all. Uh, just every animal out yeah. there. What about insects? You could just sign a law that bans mosquitoes. <laughs> That'd be great. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, October 1st, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,208. Silver opened to $17.28. And Bitcoin is trading around $381.59. Today's Bitcoin price is brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news today, the first case of Ebola diagnosed in the United States was confirmed yesterday in a patient who recently traveled from Liberia to Dallas, a sign of the far-reaching impact of the out-of-control epidemic in West Africa. The unidentified man was critically ill and has been in isolation at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas, Texas since Sunday. That word from federal health officials. They would not reveal his nationality or age. On Tuesday, California Governor Jerry Brown signed into law a bill that would allow the temporary seizure of guns from individuals who the courts deemed to be a threat to themselves or others. Under the new law, law enforcement officers can ask courts for restraining orders, which would bar the individual from possessing a firearm for 21 days. The measure was supported by Democrats and anti-gun groups and opposed by the NRA and gun owners of California. Charles H. Cunningham, a director with the NRA's Institute for Legislative Action, called the law one of the most egregious violations of civil liberties ever introduced in the California legislature. China's government has cut off news about Hong Kong's pro-democracy protests to the rest of the country, a clampdown so thorough that no image of the rallies has appeared in state-controlled media, and at least one man has been detained for reposting accounts of the events. By contrast, media in semi-autonomous Hong Kong have been broadcasting non-stop about the crowds, showing unarmed students fending off tear gas and pepper spray with umbrellas, as they call for more representative democracy in the former British colony. Support for the Liberty Bee comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries. Homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated. Helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, October 1st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook, facebook.com, the Liberty Beat. The Federal Communications Commission chairman will consider a petition that asked the agency to consider finding broadcasters with the National Football League who continue to use the Redskins' name when referring to the Washington football team. Activist John Banzoff III has registered a petition with the FCC asking the regulatory agency to strip Washington radio station WWXXFM of its broadcasting license for using what he says is a racist and hateful word. If the FCC agrees with the petition, broadcasters would be punished for using the football team name. The Washington Redskins is also currently battling the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office after they canceled the team's trademark registration based on alleged racism. A new study published in the journal JAMA Pediatrics indicates that frequent prescribing of broad-spectrum antibiotics increases the risk of obesity in children. The study found that babies who were given broad-spectrum antibiotics in the first two years of life were more likely to be obese between their second and fifth birthdays than those children who had taken no antibiotics or narrow-spectrum antibiotics. While broad-spectrum antibiotics are found to be highly effective, they can also kill off beneficial bacteria the body needs. The study examined medical records of nearly 65,000 babies and children from the Philadelphia area. The increased risk of obesity was about 11% higher for children